little help, please? How about this? AARP Med Can Thorpe Award candidate Kevin Allen pave the way for Freeport? Well, Farmingdale will have plenty to say about that. The Dalers are a gritty group and are poised to knock off the defending champs and recapture their glory season of 2007 when Farmingdale was king of Nassau County's Conference One. It's the Red Devils. And the Dalers, and all the action is about to unfold on MSG Varsity's High School Sports Showcase. MSG Varsity presents High School Sports Showcase tonight from Shewitt Stadium on the campus of Hofstra University in Hempstead. It's the Nassau County Conference One title till with Farmingdale taking on Freeport. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Carl Reuter, joined by Tom Howard. Tom, both teams have been to this game before. Both coaches have been here to this game before. So it's no surprise at all for anything that might happen tonight. It certainly is, Carl. When these guys, both coaches, talk to their teams back in August when they get there for the preseason meeting and talk about the season, they talk about one thing, one goal, get to the Long Island Championship. Win the Nassau County title, get to the Long Island Championship. Russ Sell and Buddy Krumenak, they've been here before. They know what it takes. Their kids have worked all season. They're here tonight. They're doing what they needed to do right from the very beginning. All right, personnel wise our highlight players mr versatility number nine the senior for farmingdale brian prendergast prendergast is a wide receiver that they move back into the backfield when they need to do it and he runs the wildcat back there but he can do everything return punts he did that for touchdown block field goals he did that for touchdown he's all over the field last week 111 11 carries for 112 yards a 10.0 average he's the guy you got to watch out for when you speak about watching out for guys, Farmingdale's defense will have its work cut out for them tonight. The senior, number 20, Thorpe Award candidate, Kevin Allen. I'll tell you something. Prendergast is a good one. This guy's a great one. He has everything. He is an electric football player, and he can make things happen. For the year, 258 yards rushing, 16, I'm sorry, 258 carries for 1,643 yards rushing, a 6.3 average, 27 touchdowns, rushing the ball, 29 total. That ties Amos Zeroway's Nassau County mark. Well, we just saw some great players. Prendergast for Farmingdale, Kevin Allen for Freeport. Both of these teams are supported by wonderful head coaches that know how to win football games. First, in his 17th year on the sidelines of the Farmingdale Dalers, a 1965 graduate from Farmingdale, High school, that's Buddy Krumenacher. What are Coach Krumenacher's keys? Well, Buddy Krumenacher basically has three keys that he's talking about, and I like the key that goes on there that talks about playing solid defense. Championship football is playing solid defense. Over the last five games, his first team defense has only given up three touchdowns. That is going to be the key to the game for Farmingdale as far and, as I'm concerned. Excuse me, Tom. His counterpart is Russ Sellen, now in his 24th year, head man at Freeport. Lindenhurst graduate, 1975. Coach Sellen's keys are, and I know you're going to key in on one. Well, the key I'm going to key in on right now has to do with stopping the Dalers on first down. They need to stop the Dalers on first down. Four second and long, make them pass. They're not used to doing it. And you can see the other two keys are important, but stopping on first down will be the most important key. Two outstanding coaches, two super programs. That equals one great football game. It's all about to unfold right after this on MSG Varsity. Cirque du Soleil presents Banana Spiel. Previews begin February 4th at the Beacon Theater. Tickets at Ticketmaster or Cirque du Soleil.com slash NYC. Every school has its legends. Every school has its glories. Every school has an almost. A someday. A someday. A someday. A someday. And a Hail Mary. Every school can list the championships it's won. And the games it should have. Every school has its stars. And its understudies. Every school has its hamlets. And its second strings. Every school has its MVPs. Its MVPs. Its MVPs. Its MVPs. Its MVPs. And its underdogs. Every school has the chances it's taken. And the opportunities it's blown. Every school. Every school. Every school. Every school. Every school. Every school has its stories. Now there's a place to share them all. MSG Varsity is the first network devoted to local high school sports and activities. Only on Optimum.
Paul Reuter, along with Tom Howard, back here at Hofstra University, James M. Schuert Stadium, just about ready for action. Nassau County Conference One football championship game between Farmingdale and Freeport. The Dale is the number three seed. Freeport, the number one seed. Both teams come in with a mark of eight and two on the season. And you don't see this happen too often in the game. But <laughs> yeah, Freeport, right, Freeport <laughs> deferred. Farmingdale received the ball. Freeport said, we'll defend the north end zone. But then they went out first and lined up in the south end zone. Farmingdale then just went the opposite way. All of a sudden, Russ Sellen looks out and says, wait a second, guys. <laughs> you know, there's no wind. The wind has absolutely nothing to do with this tonight. It's just that they were going the wrong way. So they said, hey, let's switch things around. So before I kick off, two teams run past each other. And there you see number 35, Andres Lopez, will kick off. And that was Brian Pendergast, number nine, deep to receive for the Dale. As he's our highlight player, and he'll touch the ball first, possibly. We will watch as Lopez is about to approach. The winner moves on to the Long Island Class 1 Championship Thanksgiving Day weekend at Stony Brook. From the five-yard line. Whoa, oh, and a bruising tackle inside the 15 to start. You want to hit, boys? Let's hit. Let's get it on for the Conference One Championship. And how about a group of red shirts swarming down there as we see Sal Tuttle running out and handing the ball. He'll be back at quarterback after a slight shoulder uh, injury last week. The numbers on Sal Tuttle, number 11, six foot, 180 pound junior quarterback. Shoulder separation earlier in the week. We were told he probably would not play. They were trying to uh, fit him with a support brace on that shoulder but talking to the coach buddy kumanaka right before the game i said will sal tuttle any chance he might see any action he goes he's starting for us shotgun tuttle tuttle on the pitch prendergast to the outside prendergast with a big burst and he gets across the 20 to the 22 yard line let's take a look at the offensive starters for farmingdale tom well, you see a center, Caden, uh, Hayden Kirk, right there in the middle, number 55. He's a big physical returning guy who's a good leader and a smart man. Keep an eye on Keith Hadnagy. He's a very good receiver out of the backfield. And the good running back, Kevin Wall, number 32, carrying the ball for the Dallas. And at left guard, I want to watch the stud, number 67, Chris Richards. We had Farmingdale in week two against Syosset. Richards did not play in that football game. And that was a game that Farmingdale lost last second field goal by Syosset, 23 to 20. Tuttle is dragged down from behind. Nice play by number seven, Jeff Williams. Let's take a look at the Freeport defense. Freeport defense, big and physical up front, Tillman. Bateman and Brown good there, but Kevin Allen in the middle of that defense is excellent as a middle linebacker. And you saw Jeff Williams make the tackle right there. Defensive backs, the safeties, Groover and Benora, very strong in the defensive backfield. Excellent at middle linebacker. How about Allen? 77 tackles, 12 sacks, Tom. Well, we talk about guys going sideline to sideline. Nobody goes faster sideline to sideline from the middle linebacker position than Kevin Allen, and he can get in the backfield and make things happen. On third and eight, Tuttle's going to throw. He's got friend of gas. He backtracks, then tries to reverse his field, and he's dumped at the 15, a loss of one. It's fourth and nine. Yeah, I'll tell you something. Right off the bat, that field position, Buddy Kumak was talking in the beginning about making Freeport go to the long field. Well, right now, Farmingdale needs to go to the long field, and Freeport's going to get good field position. Here's a pass. Prendergast out there, but instead of going forward, he goes backwards. Just a shirt tackle right there by, by number Brian 22, Benora. And yeah. you can see he has the shirt, and he's not getting any place. Prendergast goes backwards. Farmingdale in a punting situation. Had Nagy, number 20, to punt for Farmingdale. Nice high kick. Driving. The return man, number 18, Jerry Brown back, and then scoots forward for a couple. So Freeport, excellent field position, as Tom pointed out. Freeport at its own 48 to start first and 10. Yeah, that's something that Buddy was very concerned about coming into this game. He wanted to make Freeport go the long field from the opening kickoff. He got stuck in, he didn't get the move, three and out. So now Freeport has good field position. So we take a look at Kevin Allen's numbers on the year. Ridiculous. Look at those stats. I mean, 27 TDs this season, and that's rushing. He also has one reception, and he has one kick return. 29 total ties in Zeroway's record. Zeroway, the only two-time award, uh, Thorpe Award winner. Here's Kevin Allen to the secondary. Tripped up. Let's see where they spotted. Very close to a first down. Take a look at the Freeport offense. 
Offensive line has helped out during this year. You got to take a look over there at uh, Ronnie Tillman and Terrell Brown on the right hand side. They're good ones, but you know, Ashante Forsterfelder is one of the best receivers in the county. They just haven't been able to get the ball to him this year. And as we highlighted before, Jare Brown, also another good one. Keith Brown, a coach on Russell and staff. That's his son, Jare. There is Ashante Forsterfelder. And that first and 10. Oh, dragging down from behind. A nice big stop there by number 68, Tony Berner, as we take a look at the Farmingdale defense. Farmingdale defense, big and physical up front. Berner, Tenney, Fratto, and Richards, who you mentioned before, a real good one. Their linebackers, though, Chris Napolitano, you got to watch out for, and Keith Hagnagy and Brian Pendergast in the defensive backfield round that out. Excellent players. As I said before, Carl, Farmingdale's only given up three touchdowns. Well, there's Chris Richards, one of the reasons. 98 points given up all season long by Farmingdale. Eight points or less, seven times this year. The high, 23 in the loss at Syosset in week two. Second and 10, Allen throws, overshoots the intended target, Foster Felder. Now, Foster Felder is the key receiver they want to get to. Had 11 touchdowns last year, only one this year because they couldn't get the ball to him. But what I noticed when we were down the field before the game is that if Farmingdale wants to do anything, they want to get Kevin Allen passing because he doesn't have a great arm, strong arm, but not a great arm. But running, you just can't stop him. You saw on that first play when he carried the ball. So they want to put him in a passing situation, not a running situation. Well, this, in all probability, a passing situation, third and 10. The ball resting at the Farmingdale 42. Yeah, they get inside the 40, though. They gain four or five yards on this play. They may go for it on fourth down. Allen's going to take it on that quarterback keep. Tried to get into the secondary. He's very close, Tom Howard, to a first down. Dragged down from behind by number nine, Brian Prendergast. And if you look how he stretched for that extra yardage call, that extra yardage may have picked up that first down. Watch as he takes the ball. He goes up the middle, then cuts back to the outside. Farmingdale makes a tackle. You see number nine, Prendergast, come in there, but he's very close to the first down. High snap on that. Allen takes it down, just following that zone blocking off the right side. They're going to come out and measure while we have the opportunity. The referee is Bob Miller, the umpire Elvin Brown, the linesman Lowell Citron, the line judge is Steve DeLillo, and the back judge is Tommy O'Connor. And while I mention Steve DeLillo, let's get a speedy recovery to his dad, Kaz DeLillo, under the weather, saw Kaz a couple of weeks ago. Things look to be okay. Kaz DeLillo, one of the good guy officials working not only uh, on the football field, but basketball as well. As well. And I know Kaz for a long time, well, also a great lacrosse official. Yeah, too. he's just, he's one of the, he's an official's official. He's one yeah. of the great guys. This will be fourth and short, Tom. Allen will take it shotgun, offset eye right. Allen takes that flip. Allen's got the first down. Allen banging some helmets, pushed down at the 28-yard line, first and 10 Red Devils. Good job by Allen following his blockers, and as we said before, he is a good forward lean. He's able to pick up that first down easily. Take a look if you get a shot of his calves. He has some <laughs> of the biggest calves I've ever seen as we listen to this play unfold. <laughs> Talk about some popping going on out there tonight, Carl. A lot Carl. of pop. A lot of pop. There's number 20, Kevin Allen, 5'11", 215 pounds. The last two playoff games, 10 touchdowns. Six a couple of weeks ago, four last week. Skipping his way, prancing forward towards that first down marker. Number 21, Daniel Olivier, just like Sir Lawrence Olivier. You know, uh, Olivier is known as a great blocker, but he can also carry the ball. West Allen says, give him a hole and he'll make things happen. And he finds the hole right there. Just follows his blocks away from number 52. That's Matt Warner to clear out, making his block. And he finds about ah, nine yards on that play to pick up a first down. Look, he dragged had Nagy for about two or three extra yards. First and 10. Freeport from the Farmingdale 17. Allen turns the corner. Allen still on his feet, drives forward to the nine yard line, a pickup of eight at second and two. You know, talking to the Farmingdale coaching staff before the game began, their biggest fear was a fast start by Freeport, which is exactly what's happening right now as we watch Kevin Allen take the ball, following the blocking of Olivier off the corner, and then getting hit and still driving. Look at that leg drive. He keeps the feet going. Look at the size of those calves as he's coming around here. 
lowers the shoulder, delivers the hit, and keeps moving. Tom, you talk about fast starts. Last week, Freeport, average play. Average play went for eight yards. They had 21 first downs to only three for Baldwin. They rushed for 383 yards. And Baldwin's a very good football team. Uh, head coach Steve Carroll there. Going forward, inside the five, close to the goal line. Again, it's Olivier on the carry. You know, talking to Russ Sellen during the week, he said that, uh, you know, Russ, the father of the spread offense here on Long Island, as we take a look at Olivier taking the ball, following instead of blocking up front, Freeport's getting off that offensive line and doing the job as they're blocking. You can see one more time, getting off Olivier, gaining the yards. Russ Sellen said it's like looking in the mirror watching Farmingdale play. They run the same offense as we do right now, but we just have to make sure the mirror shines a little better on our side this week, and he's starting out very well that way. Folks, in case you don't know some of the history of Freeport, one of their graduates, the Brickashaw Ferguson, left tackle, New York Jets, went to Virginia out of Freeport High School. Kevin Allen busted it through. Touchdown, Kevin Allen, Freeport strikes first. Nice job by Kevin Allen. Just again, what I'm most impressed with, as well as Kevin Allen's been doing now and Dan Olivier, I'm impressed with this offensive line. They are schooling Farmingdale right now. As you watch that left side of the offensive line, just blowing Farmingdale off the ball. That's what wins championship games when you get your offensive line getting off, controlling the line of scrimmage. This will be number 35, Andres Lopez for the point after. And that splits the upright 7-0 in favor of Freeport with 6.36 left in this first quarter. You're going to take a look right here. You're going to watch Kevin Allen take the football, do what he does best, as now he breaks Amos Zeraway's Nassau County touchdown record, getting into the end zone for the 30th time this year. Just following his blocking, but look at the blocking up the front as you see number 65, David Agu, pulling, kicking out, creating, help create the hole that the rest of the offensive line made. Happy Kevin Allen on the sideline. Little hug there from Ronnie Tillman. So, Kevin Allen, a Thorpe Award candidate, just breaks Amos Zeraway's record. Amos Zeraway, the only two-time winner of the Thorpe Award in the history of that Thorpe Award. In fact, there's another Zeraway on the scene. A Hempstead. freshman at Hempstead, a Absolutely. running back, had three touchdowns in his very first game way back in September. Yep, he's uh, he's going to be moving up there and keep, mm -hmm. that, keep that name in mind. Eight play, 52-yard drive, took three minutes and 25 seconds, <laughs> and uh, Freeport goes up there on the lead. That was a... That was, you see Jimmy Jones yeah, there? Yeah. Jimmy Jones Hopster is a former, guy. yeah, yeah. former uh, Red Freeport Devil. Red yeah. Devil himself. Jimmy Jones, uh, running backs coach for Russ Sellen. Lovely wife Meredith was my wife, my wife's, my daughter's roommate at Hofstra University. Maybe my wife's roommate too, because <laughs> I'm, a, a very I'm never wife. around there. <laughs> There's Lopez in the deep man for Farmingdale right now. Top of the screen is number nine. That's Prendergast. Ryan Prendergast. They like to get into his hands. Sal Tuttle, number 11, to the bottom of the screen. Oh, excuse me, not Sal Tuttle. I'm sorry. That was uh, Pat Dunn, number 31. There's Prendergast busting it through. Prendergast, the far side. Oh, what a great stop there. Or well, Brian Prendergast would have been gone, gone. Andres Lopez, the kicker on the tackle. And just a missed block. If we get to see this again, you're going to see one of the Dalers come in to try to hit Lopez and just missed him by inches and made the tackle. Excellent job there by Lopez to make the tackle. Prendergast takes the ball, fumbles it a little bit initially. Gets it in, tucks it away, and then watch the wall coming and watch right to the left hand side of your screen. Whew, just miss block right there. Not your As typical kickoff nope. guy, Tom. He certainly isn't. <laughs> Good hit. Good hit. Excited about it, too. Split the backs, and there's movement left side there. Big number 72, Ronnie Tillman, 265 pound senior moves. There's Bob Miller. Your referee. You know, Pete Malloy is the offensive coordinator for the Dallas. Has done a tremendous job over the last couple of years. And as we listen. Defense, number 72. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. And there you go, Pete, with the call. And, and, and Pete Malloy stresses the fact that when a team scores on us, we have to rescore. It's very important to, to come back. It's almost like a heavyweight fight. Punch and counter punch. You've got to make sure that you come back. Score down, very important. As you take a look at Buddy Krumenacker right there, of the Dallas responding to this score. First and, and five. And I'm sorry, Carl, if they don't score, they got to get good field position out of that to, to bottle up the Red Devils. Nothing doing there on that run by Carmine Demiri. Last week had 
Eight carries, 13 yards on the season, 590 yards. And you see Corey Bateman, number 53, come in here. Makes the tackle coming from the backside. He's an all-county defensive end, 6'2", 210 pounds. But he's just tracking him down from the backside, doing a real good job. Less than six minutes remaining in this first quarter. And it's 7-0 in favor of Freeport. Shotgun. Tuttle wants the throw. Rolls to the far side. Launches it downfield. And is it complete? Two Farmingdale guys were there. What's the call? I think the ball incomplete. went. Incomplete. Yeah, it's incomplete. The ball's on the ground. But uh, two Farmingdale guys in the same area. That's Brian Thompson, number 80. Take a look at Tuttle. He's getting ready to throw, getting ready to throw. But he doesn't have his, again, he's throwing off his back foot, so the ball floats just a little bit. But he does have two guys who are open. Nice job, though, trying to keep his feet inbounds as Keith Hagnagy. Well, you know what, though? I think Thompson, number 80, got in the way of Hagnagy, right. who had camped under it. Exactly. Hagnagy was a deeper receiver trying to come down with the ball. Had his feet planted so they'd be inbounds. Did you take a good look at Keith right there? But you're right. Thompson came in the way and couldn't see it. It's third down and seven. Farmingdale sends twins to the bottom of the screen as Tuttle will work shotgun. He's launching it long again. Had Nagy's out there, and it's broken up at the very last minute. Great job there by Say G. Hinton, the senior cornerback at 165 pounds, 5'9". Yeah, Say G does a real good job because the ball is waiting to come down. Actually, Had Nagy had him beat deep at that point. Ball floating a little bit. Say G waiting for it, and you watch. Hand comes down. Again, Hagnagy going up for the ball, but Seiji doing a good job of getting that right arm in there and just knocking it down, and that's his job. All right, here's the punting formation right now. Had Nagy to boot. Jerry Brown wait to receive, and another beautiful punt. Taking it to 25 by Brown. So he's, he's got some room on the far side. Brown on the cutback to midfield and dropped it to Farmingdale, 47. I was going to say this, hope he didn't outkick his coverage because that happens so often when you kick, you have a good kick and you don't have people to get down underneath it. 27 return, yard return on the punt. Had Nagy puts the ball down there, it's about a 52 yard punt, but Brown has room to run. And sometimes when you outkick your coverage, you don't have somebody down there, you end up having problems. Sophomore return of 27 for Brown on the punt. Great field position for Freeport from the Farmingdale, 47. 520 left in the first quarter. Freeport up, 7-0. Kevin Allen, oh, a little juke by Allen. Allen still on his feet. Allen is trying to spin and drop at the 22-yard line by number 31, Pat Dunn. But that's a huge pickup of 25 yards. Allen is starting to roll right now. That's bad news for the Farmingdale defense. Farmingdale, two possessions, three and out, and then about five and out. They're out, but look at this right now. As Kevin Allen gets going, he gets rolling, he breaks tackles, has a strong leg, uses a good straight arm, and he's still moving after two guys trying to pull him down. Here's the second half of the run. Again, a good straight arm to the face. Two guys trying to pull him down right there. Pat Dunn also coming into the picture. And going and taking it to the house is Daniel Olivier from 22 yards out. Ball, this is something the Dale defense did not expect. As I said before, they've only given up three touchdowns in their last five games. They've given up two touchdowns in the first eight minutes of this game. Take a look right here as Olivier takes the ball. You have to worry about Allen. You're keen on Allen. Well, that opens up holes for Olivier. Just sort of trots in the end zone the last five years, five yards. And for the last five years, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> as a young guy. Andres Lopez, PAT, is good, and it's 14-0 report. Again, Dale is king on number 20. He's the great running back. Well, you know something, Olivier's showing as a junior, he may be that guy in that position next year because just taking the ball, putting the ball down to his side and trotting into the end zone. Follows his blockers, and again, that's the thing so far in the first eight minutes of this football game. I'm impressed with the Freeport controlling the line of scrimmage on offense. So this Freeport Red Devils team, quick drive, 
only 40 seconds. This Freeport Red Devils team that averages 28.6 points per game, already with 14 on the board in the first seven minutes and 20 seconds against a stingy Farmingdale defense that yields only 9.8 a game, a defense that's given up eight points or less seven times this year and had given up only three touchdowns in the last five games, has really been stung here early. They certainly have, and then field position's been a key. You see Buddy over there, and uh, Tommy, Tommy uh, Corcoran, and Pete Mallory, all the coaches right there. 89 yards rushing so far for Freeport, and they really have things going their way early in the game. Farmingdale has to do something. The kicking game has been Freeport's. Everything has basically been Freeport's. Good punt returns, the whole thing, Carl. So Lopez is going to kick off right now for the Freeport Red Devils, coached by Russ Sella, now in his 24th year, graduated from Lindenhurst back in 1975. I said, did you play offense or defense? He said, defense. I couldn't be worried about all that offensive stuff, but he played at CW Post for Dom and Ely and Tom Marshall, two great football coaches. Absolutely. Prendergast from the four. Prendergast is dropped shy of the 20-yard line. So Farmingdale will put it into play first and 10 from about the 19. This is a third possession. They have, between the three possessions, their average field position has been around the 18-yard line, so right where they are. That is not good field position to start a game. Meanwhile, Freeport, the 50-yard line. The 48 the first time, the 48 of Dale is the second time. Great field position to start a game. Four minutes and 32 seconds remain in this first quarter of play. Split out, bottom of the screen. Near side, Pat Stark, number four for Farmingdale. Farmingdale will go to the ground game on that first and 10 and buried in that pile. I mean, look how many Freeport Red Devils are getting up there. They just pretty much squashed Kevin Wall, number 32. Yeah, absolutely. On defense, they're swarming to the ball. On offense, they're pushing Farmingdale off the line. They're having it their way in every phase of the game so far. Wall on the season, 745 yards, six and a half yards of pop, had 11 touchdowns. Last week, a big game against Syosset, 133 yards on 12 carries, had a long run of 52, 53, including two touchdowns. Offset eye left of Tuttle. Tuttle rolls to the near side, flipped up a little screen, in and out of the hands of number 32, Kevin Wall. You can see the frustration on his face right now. It's going to bring up a third and five. They tried to set up the screen, but again, you saw a bunch of red jerseys over on that side of the field. Wall unable to come down with it. Tuttle actually looks pretty good, though, for a shoulder separation there. Fleet. I don't think that seems to be affecting him at all in this game. A game that has 347 left in this first quarter. 14-0 Freeport. The winner will be crowned Nassau County Conference 1 champs and will move on to the Long Island Class 1 championship game. Thanksgiving Saturday, that weekend, at Stony Brook. Tuttle picks him up, puts him down, gets a first down over the 30 to the 31-yard line, a gallop of nine yards. First, first, first third down conversion of the game, Carl. You talk about possessions, Farmingdale, two possessions, two punts, they're out, Freeport, two possessions, two TDs. As you see right here, Tuttle scrambling, sees the down mark and knows where he has to go, avoids a tackle, and gets the first. Well, he's speaking about conversions on third down. Last week against Syosset, Farmingdale was 4 of 11 on third down conversions. So that was huge there, Tom, because falling behind 14-0, if they would have been stopped there and, and kicking it back to Freeport, who's red hot offensively, it could have been a long first quarter for Farmingdale. It, it, it certainly could have been because, again, they would have gotten good field positions. You see their 89 yards in this first quarter, only 20 rushing for Farmingdale. Well, Farmingdale's going to pick up a whole lot more. Kevin Wall, far side. Kevin Wall down to the 30-yard line. A big run by Kevin Wall. Chased down there by number four, Ashanti Foster Felder. But a big job there by Wall. A great job by Wall following his block is getting down there. But that also is a difference when you talk about speed. If Allen would have been out there, he's gone. Wall doing a great job, but just doesn't have that complete breakaway speed. Follows his blockers, picks up an extra 15 yards or so, but gets caught from behind by Ashante Forsterfelder. 41 yards on that run by Kevin Wall. As you see right here, following his blockers, doing a good job, then setting up his block downfield. As you saw, I believe, number 20, Keith Hadnagy, throwing that block for him. Boy, it's almost as if Farmingdale saw the graphic about the rushing numbers and said, we're going to add to that real fast. <laughs> we want to make it look good. Absolutely. 
Well, after a 41-yard run, they get right back to Wall, who was put down at the line of scrimmage, second down and 10, that Freeport defense there. Wow. Jeff Williams coming in and making the hit right there at the line of scrimmage says, okay, you know something? We gave you one big run. We're going to stuff you for the next three plays. That's our job. Timeout. Called by the Dallas. No, by Freeport. By Freeport. By Freeport. On second and 10 for Farmingdale, the ball at the 30-yard line. 2.44 left in this first quarter. Freeport up 14-0. Russ Sellen calls for time. Basically, I think Russ Sellen is saying right now, he's saying, hey, Farmingdale finally has good field position out of this thing. We got to put our foot to the metal here and make sure these guys don't go any further. We got to start taking off on defense, pushing in their backfield and making a couple hits. Hey, fans, don't forget to tune to MSG Varsity Monday through Friday for high school sports. That's Jared Greenberg and Sean Ryan bringing you the highlights, scores, and features from high schools around the tri-state region. See if they mention your school on the high school sports desk, 7 to 10 p.m. every weeknight only on MSG Varsity. There's the Freeport Red Devil. Red Devil is a Red Devil. Turn around, Mr. Red Devil. He's coming. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> little by little. <laughs> Here's Russ Sellen's huddle. Regular formation, then we're just base. Then we're just base, okay? So if you get the tight end one way, Hey, tight end to our right, and the big 56 in the B gap. We're gonna short dog it, play a heavy three on the strong side, okay? And we're good to go. Hey, let's go, let's make a play, let's go. Okay, so Russ, basically what Russ is saying right now is he knows their running formation and their passing formation. If they line up in the running formation, they're gonna be blitzing, they're gonna be going in the B gap, and they're gonna be making sure that they stop the run. If it's a passing formation, then they're gonna be playing their regular base defense and get back there and just play football. I have a question I wanna ask you after this play unfolds on second down and 10 for Farmingdale from the 30 yard line. Tunnel. And they went up the middle on the handoff and it went for a loss of about a yard. The ball carrier was Carmine Demiri. Okay, both coaches know each other so well. How do you outsmart the other guy in a championship game when they've known each other for 20, 25 years on how they coach? The, the, the scouting, well, again, Farmingdale's a little different now because they're running the spread. They're doing exactly what, uh, you know, what, what Russ has been doing for years. Farmingdale knows how to coach to, to defend him, although they're not doing such a great <laughs> job right now. But, but Russ now has, he knows his offense, so he knows exactly what's coming. These guys do know each other. You, you, you don't outcoach them. What you do is you play, outplay them on the field. The players have to step up. Speaking about stepping up, Tunnel, wide open, touchdown, Hat Nagy, 31-yard aerial. And you know there had to be a breakdown in coverage there, Carl, because Keith Hat Nagy was wide open on that thing, made a little fake to the outside, Tunnel dropped back, pass all the way, dropped straight back in the pocket, good protection, and delivered the ball on the money, no red jersey near Hat Nagy at all. Watch Sal step up. That's how you want to throw the ball. Puts the ball on the money. Hag Nagy can wait for the ball. Turns, and there's no one but blue, which says Hofstra in the end zone. He has the score. Hag Nagy for the point after. 14-7. Quick strike offense, Farmingdale with 158 left. A huge touchdown for the Dalers. And Buddy Kumrak is telling his guys over there, okay, we're back in the game. Let's just relax now. You see, Hag Nagy set up, has plenty of time to throw. Everybody's on the outside. Hag Nagy's wide open in the middle of the field for the score. And Ashante Tom, forced to throw the closest guy to him, number four. Tom, no ill effects of that bad shoulder injury from last week for Tuttle against Baldwin in the semifinal matchup. None whatsoever. I mean, he's back. He's ready to go, as you see. And, and uh, you know, Keith had Nagy, not only a good receiver, as you saw right there, but a great kicker. We saw his great punch so mm -hmm. far. Yes. We saw his kickoffs. He can put the ball into the end zone kickoffs. Just had a nice extra point kick after his touchdown right there. Take a look at Tuttle on the sideline saying, hey, I had him wide open, guys. He was wide open. Just keep giving me the ball. I'll find the end zone for you. Ninth touchdown pass of the season for Sal Tuttle, the junior quarterback. On the season, came into this game with 695 yards on 37 of 69. And now nine touchdown passes to but two INTs. That's a great ratio. It's 14-7, Freeport over Farmingdale right now with 158 left. Six plays, 82 yards, 236. And now that Farmingdale defense may be able to get decent field position, start playing the way that we've been told that they can play, and their coaches tell us that they play all the time. 
And Nagy will kick. And that's a booming kick in and out of the end zone. Touchback, first and 10, free fourth from its own 20 yard line. But had Nagy has been a weapon tonight. 17 kicks into the end zone so far this year. That's something high school kickers you want to have. And, and Carl, we, we saw the, uh, the the kicker from St. Anthony's who can do that too. He's one of the best kickers that we've seen in a long time. But had Nagy showing, he belongs right up. He's right up there with him. Punch the ball well, kicks the ball well, and in championship games, the kicking game can be so important. Speaking of St. Anthony's, congratulations to Richie Reichert's team. A big win over Holy Trinity, previously unbeaten Holy Trinity, 28-21 for the Catholic League championship game. Yeah, and they, uh, you know, Rich, Rich does a tremendous job, but uh, let's talk about Tony Macy also. Yeah, and great him, job. You know, Holy great Trinity, job. They keep your heads high, guys. Kevin Allen busting it up to the 25 yard line, a pickup of five, second down and five for Freeport. Kevin Allen running with reckless abandon tonight. <laughs> he really is. I mean, he's just saying, hey, give me the ball, get on my back. I'm driving the bus. I'm telling you where I'm going. Look at this right now. Just follows his blockers. You see little, you know, full block right there by David Agu, number 65, coming around the corner. Good kick out block there by Dan Olivier. Yeah. Blocking, blocking, blocking. Football is a simple game. It's blocking and tackling. You block and tackle better than the other team. Generally, you win the football game, and right now, Freeport is doing that. Right now, the Farmingdale defense answered the challenge on the ball carrier. Daniel Olivier, number 21. That's a great job. There's the stud. Number 67, Chris Richards. He was banged up earlier in the year. As I said, we had Farmingdale against Syosset in week two, and the big guy, 67, didn't play. He came to play on that one. He certainly did. It's 6'3", 235 pounds. He can get off, and Buddy talks about his oh. great feet. He's, he's able to move. And he's sculpted. Coach Krumenacher yeah, told me, he goes, you've got to see this guy with his shirt off. This guy is built. It's like he was carved out of clay. Third down and five for Freeport from its own 25-yard line. 35 seconds left in the first quarter. Allen has to scramble. Adams, he's dropped at the 25-yard line. No gain there. It'll be fourth and five, and I believe it's Chris Richards again who came in there. And Tony Burner also. Yes. Tony Burner fighting off his block. Chris Richards starts it. Burner comes in from the backside, gets off his block, and helps make the tackle. And between Richards and Burner, 67 and 68 in your program, they did the job. They put the Red Devils in punt situation. And now Farmingdale is going to get the good field position out of this one, Carl. That's a low line and kick. That's a return type of a kick. Here's Prendergast in the next. Whoa! What a crushing block! I mean, you talk about a monster block! Carl Brescher, number 39, level. I mean, he leveled a would-be Freeport tackler. And it gave Prendergast the opportunity to turn the corner. And that's the blindside block you love to see. We will see that unbelievable block when we come back after this timeout. 12 minutes in the books. What a good one, Freeport by seven. What are optimum rewards? For Jill, it's free movie nights with her best friend, Annie. For the Olsons, it's a family outing that's a little more affordable. For Allie and Jen, it's extra savings where they like to shop. Every day, optimum rewards make life more memorable. If you have all three Optimum services, get your free Optimum Rewards card now at OptimumRewards.com. And don't forget to smile. 14-7, Freeport after one. Wow, this call pressure just through a monster block. Let's go down to the field. Here's Taylor Walker. Thank you so much, Carl. I'm here with Jonathan Bloom, Athletic Director here at Freeport. So what was it like coming into this program, working with Russ Ellen and such a well-recognized team? Um, Russ Ellen, uh, definitely one of a kind. Um, it's been a great experience for me, and um, you know he puts everything, all, all of himself, into his program, and uh, he cares so much about these kids. Um, it's been a fantastic experience for me so far. And how about watching Kevin Allen evolve in such a, into such a tremendous player? Um, Kevin Allen, well, what can you say about him? Uh, workhorse, um, really the heart and soul of this team. Uh, there's nothing he can't do: um, run the ball, tackle, kick the ball, throw the ball. Um, he's really it was quite an athlete. Jonathan, thank you so much for speaking with us. Athletic director for Freeport High School. Thank you. Thank you. That's Jonathan Bloom, who Taylor just spoke to, Russ Ellen watching on. And Tom, 
as we saw the second quarter start, again, confusion on what end yeah. you defended. I was going to say, <laughs> Freeport and Farmington you know, are a little confused on which way they're supposed to be going. And, and let me tell you about John Bloom. John Bloom used to be an AD in Amityville for a couple of years. He took the job at Freeport. He's one of the new, young, and upcoming ADs in Nassau County. Great guy. He's young enough that looks like he's still in high school. Is that young? Good night, Kevin Wall. Kevin Wall inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line, a pickup of 34 yards. I believe oh, that was Carmine Demiri. It is. Yeah, it is Carmine Demiri. My but correction. 32 and 22 from up here look very, very similar, but it was. It was Demiri who Demiri got it. Demiri bursted up 34. the middle. First and 22 yards for Demiri, and watch this. Just a fake, and watch. He fakes to the right, and then comes back and takes the ball, good blocking. I talked about the controlling the line of scrimmage for Freeport. Well, let me start talking about controlling oh. the line of scrimmage for Farmingdale as Sagey Hinton comes in to make this touchdown saving tackle right there. So my correction, Carmine Demiri, the senior, it was not Wall. Here's Demiri again. Off the cutback inside the five, close down to the three. Let me give kudos oh, to Pete Mallory, the offensive there. coordinator. You have a play that goes for 40 yards or 30 yards or 20 yards, run it again. Exact same play they come back with now. Now that you're down in the two-yard line, it makes it a little tougher because of a deep goal line defense. You want to get your man through the end zone, get the line off the ball. Watch Carmine again. Fake and take the ball, the exact same thing. Right up the middle of the gut. Good job by the Farmingdale O getting off, making their blocks. Demiri so, coming out. Demiri, yeah, the tap on the helmet from the head coach, Buddy Krumenacher. So Tuttle, your quarterback, is number 11. Farmingdale splits Prendergast and Dunn to the bottom of the screen. Wall is the lone setback. They give it to Wall, and Wall is met there by number four and number 65. We're talking about Foster Felder and number 65, David Agu. And that's where Freeport beat Farmingdale off the ball. When you're playing goal line defense, you want to play offense on D. You want to get into the offensive backfield. That play took a little long in developing. You can see Freeport in the defensive backfield. David Agu leading the way. Also Ronnie Tillman in there. Cephas, Knight, and Ward, all those guys. Farmingdale two for four and third down conversions. None bigger than this one coming up right now because I believe Buddy needs to kick a field goal if he doesn't get the touchdown here. Agu is a big guy. I mean, he's 6'1", 255. Very similar, very similar build to Richards. The exact same. Tuttle fighting on his feet, busting it through. And did he break the plane? He's very close. No signal yet, which means he did not break the plane. The, the official, you had the linesman not the line judge, but the linesman on our side of the field who actually said the ball hit on about the two-inch line, and that's where he's putting it. And you can see that Tuttle Tuttle's has... Hurt. Yeah, he has a bad hand. Tuttle is hurt. Tuttle to the inside the one. Watch this one more time as Tuttle fights for the yards, keeps his balance, keeps going. He's at the one-inch line, and because of the ball, you can see right there, is in the right hand behind him. Good, great camera work here. But I'll tell you right now, as he's denied, I think Coach Krumenacher, not only did he call a timeout because it's fourth and about a half a yard, he's calling time to give Tuttle a blow to see if his quarterback can go back in there right now and make this fourth down play. Yeah, yeah, he wants to make sure his, his wrist is okay. Great call by the official, by the way, call off camera work, which was excellent right That's there. That's Citron, on the linesman. Yep, showed that right there the ball went down literally on about the six-inch line. That's where it's spotted. He's still a little bit... Uh, banged up right there because Tuttle keeps bending over. Keep an eye on Sal Tuttle, the quarterback there. Remember, we didn't think he was going to play this week, and then before the game, we were told he is going to play. He had the bad shoulder, got knocked out of the game last week against Baldwin. There's Sal Tuttle, the junior quarterback. He's a tough six foot, 180 pounds. Yeah, he's coming out, and I don't think he's coming out because he's hurt, even though I believe he might be a little banged up. He's coming out because they're going to put Prendergast in there, I think, at this point. And they're going to run their little wildcat out of this thing. And this is, you know, again, my belief when you get down here is when you take your tail back and you run laterally to the line of scrimmage one way or the other and you plant and you cut up. The ball is literally on the six-inch line. So as you mentioned, Tom, we'll do a little Wildcat here. And they're going to line up Wildcat with Kevin Wall, 32. Now we've got a whistle before the snap. Nobody, nobody, no one, no one was on the receiver up at the top. Did they have to call time free yeah. for that? Because you know what? The top of the screen, Pat Stark was all alone, and all of a sudden, the Shanti Foster Felder was over there. You think, uh, you think you got a hot guy right here? Russ, Russ selling and screaming because we, 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 you teach your offense 
if you ever spread a guy out and he's wide open, you just throw the ball out to him and let him walk into the end zone. But on defense, because any big mistake on defense can give up six points to see Russ selling hot with his team, you call timeout. When you see a mistake on defense, you automatically call timeout. And somebody on Freeport was smart enough to do that because there was a wide open receiver, as you said, Pat Dunn at the top of the screen. Jimmy Jones? Well, I'm not oh, looking at no. Jimmy Jones. I'm looking at the attention that Shanti Foster oh, Felder, okay. number four, is directly his eyes making contact with Coach Russ Sellin because he was the culprit. He's the reason why the timeout had to be called. Yep. That is what you would call an animated timeout. Yeah. <laughs> and I also think he's telling the guys, there's nothing to lose. It's fourth down. You play offense on defense. I want guys coming forward. You got to get in the backfield. You have to make things happen now. If I'm Buddy on the other side, I'm telling my guys, this could be the game. We may never get down. We're not kicking the field goal. We're six inches from our end zone. We'll never be that close again. If we don't put this in now, we're in trouble. And again, Tuttle went to the sideline. And they'll work the Wildcat shotgun, Kevin Wall, at his five-yard line. Out of the shotgun. Wall, time to the left side, touchdown, Kevin Wall! How about the vision of Kevin Wall to watch for the hole? Caught the snap, started to his left, saw the quick opening and darted right through it. It wasn't a big hole, it was just enough for him to get through, but you're gonna watch right here on Rich's side. You go for Rich's side, good block right there by number 52, Chris Napolitano, to create that opening. Here's the extra point upcoming to tie the game, had Nagy, and he boots it home. And it's tied at 14. Had Nagy looking for a flag on that play at the end, too, because he got hit, and he's looking at the officials. No flag called at that point, but he puts the ball through. Wall taking the ball, just following, just nice down blocking right down the line. They're going to say they're going to put their best running back, Kevin Wall, one-on-one -on -one with a corner on the goal line and see if that corner can stop me, and obviously he was not able to do that. So Freeport opened up the game with a 14-0 burst, and Farmingdale has answered with two scores of its own to tie it at 14, with 9.29 left in the Conference 1 championship game from Nassau County. And Carl, we talked before about punch, counter punch. You gotta respond, you gotta come back. Obviously, the Farmingdale O and the Farmingdale D have done their job for the last couple of minutes as you look at Buddy Krumenacker on that seven play, 42-yard drive. <laughs> Arms folded. One of the few head coaches that doesn't don a headset. No, nope, he listens to his assistants. Yeah. He has Pete Malori, Tommy Corcoran. It's great. Joe, Joe Schwartz. He has a great, great group. Richie Maniscalco. Farmingdale. Two punts the first two times. Two scores the last two times. Now. Had Nagy with a big foot here. Let's see what happens. Kevin Allen, one of the deep men, number 20 to the top of the screen. Number four, Shante Foster Felder to the bottom of the screen. You don't want either of these guys returning <laughs> no, against you. Do, you do want to make sure you if put I'm, the ball in the end I'm zone. If I'm kicking, I'm kicking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Up in the booth. That's exactly <laughs> it. Had Nagy. We've got liftoff. Driving Allen back, and Allen just watches it again go in and out of the end zone, touch back to the 20 yard line. Take this a look guy's there, got Keith. a foot and a half. Yep, certainly does. I know you're a big proponent of the kicking game, so you really pay attention to this stuff. A absolutely, and, and in Hagnagy, you talk about putting Prendergast back there, you can also put Hagnagy in the backfield because he can run, he can catch and do things, and he could quick kick out of there, and boom, quick kick 60 and 70 yards. There's Keith Hagnagy. Ryan Prendergast, Mr. Versatility. Had Nagy can get the job done, Kevin Wall. Some people might take this the wrong way, but I, I take it as a positive. Farmingdale's got a lot of blue-collar workers on this team that can do a lot of different things. They're lunch spot guys. They Absolutely. fill their power up, and they just go to work, and it's exactly what they do. And they're a team. Not that Freeport isn't a team, but Freeport has that one star. Farmingdale doesn't have any one star. They need everybody. They have to have a team effort. 
That carry by Kevin Allen on first and 10 from the 20 yard line. And, and concern in Russ Sellers' face, and rightfully so. How were we moving in the beginning? We were moving at will. Now, all of a sudden, the last two drives, Farmadale stopped us, and now it looks like, hey, there's nothing. But remember, he's 10 seconds away from the score every time the ball's in, in his hands. Clock moving, nine minutes left in this first half with tied at 14. Freeport, the first two scores led 14 nothing. Farmingdale's come back with two scores of its own. We're tied at 14. Rushing pretty much even. Freeport had the advantage early on. Farmingdale's caught up. Speaking of catching, the reception was made there by Valent Vales, a senior wide receiver at 5'9", 180 pounds. Vales is short, though, the first down. How about Valent catching the ball one yard short of the first down, but then the good defensive hit right there, driving him back a diff another yard. So. You watch right now as Kevin Allen takes the ball, he just rolls out, he sees his receiver, who should have run to the chains and back, but only runs nine yards, and it's gonna be third and one. From the backside, you're gonna see Kevin get it and get a little hit there, too, after he delivered the ball. Excellent job right there by Pat Dunn coming up to make the hit. Freeport showing trips to the bottom of the screen. Offset eye is Olivier, number 21. Offset eye left. Allen takes it, has got the first down and more. Dropped at the 34-yard line, dropped from behind by number nine, Brian Prendergast. And I'm surprised it got away from that. Get Allen the ball, let him run off tackle and find his holes to the left or right. He can cut back great, he has excellent vision. Watch as he takes the snap, he's going slow now, then he sees there's the hole, and that's where he's using to put on his burst. Let him keep doing that, pick up five and six yards of the shot. Last play goes for five yards to ball to the 34. It's first and 10 right now for Freeport. Kevin Allen averaging 6.4 yards a pop. Well, that's a little lower than his season average. Well, actually, it's right on his Six average, 6.4, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's right there. Last week, you were looking at which he had that yeah. huge game. Allen wants to throw on the straight drop over the middle. A shot the Foster Felder. He's got speed to burn. Taking it 66 yards to the house. And we talked about Asante Foster Felder's ability to make touchdowns. Not this year, though, because he hasn't had somebody to get the ball to him. Take a look right now when Kevin Allen delivers the ball. Foster Felder down, running a post pattern to the middle of the field, catches the ball in full stride, and he's gone. You're not going to catch him from behind. 66 yards, free put by six. Andres Lopez for the point after. Block! That's a great job on special teams by the Dalers from Farmingdale. And I don't know, is it Pat Stark who came flying in there for that block? I yes, think, it is. Yeah. Pat Stark, number four, Tom. I was going to say, I think Pat Stark's the guy who made the block. And, you know, in championship games, again, just keep an eye on that one because that can come back to haunt you at some point. Right there, Stark coming in from the side, doing a oh. great job of laying out. It's exactly how you teach him to do it. Go to the point where the ball is going to be kicked. Don't go near where the holder is. Don't go near where the kicker is. He went right to the point of the ball being kicked. It came up and went right into his hands. Excellent job, Pat. One more time taking a look here at Kevin Allen dropping back to pass, looking for his man, Ashante Foster Felder, and catching him in full stride, running across the middle of the field, off to the races. Freeport takes the 20 to 14 lead. Look, good line protection. You see the blocking, there's no pressure at all, and that when you get Foster Felder, and you're not covering him man for man, your zone better be back there and able to converge on him, unable to do it that time for the Dale as Foster Felder takes it to the house. 66 yard touchdown reception, Allen to Foster Felder. Blocked extra point, but free point, Freeport in this uh, punch, counter punch game, now leading it by six at 20 to 14. Farmingdale's turn to answer, Freeport's turn to start playing defense again like they did in the first First quarter, six play drive, 80 yards, 223. Doesn't take long for the Red Devils to score on you. Nope, not when you get a big long pass like that of 66 yards. Wow. 
Ryan Prendergast, number nine, bottom of the screen. Number 31, top of the screen is Pat Dunn, awaiting the kick from once again, number 35, Andres Lopez. 7.07 remaining in this first half. It's been a real good one for the Nassau County Conference One Championship. The winner moves on to Stony Brook on Thanksgiving Saturday for the Long Island Class One title game. Prendergast from the 12. Boy, he was hog-tied, wrestled down at the 20-yard line on special team coverage on the kickoff by Freeport. I like Freeport's speed on wow, that kickoff. Slow you see, to get up. Yeah, I can say, you can see his head. He got tackled yeah. by the helmet, and he really is foggy right now. It's he's, like, my goodness. He's it's, real yeah. foggy right now. And, and he's a key guy in the offense, but, right? It's a split end, but he but has to get... they need to yeah. watch him. That's more important right yeah. now, because yeah. he's having... Well, he seems to be okay. I don't know. He looked a little wobbly when he got up originally, Tom. I, I would think if this was the NFL and he had a headset in his helmet, he'd be saying, I can't hear right now out of the thing. He's banging that thing like he has a headset in there. It's not working. So you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm keeping an eye on him. But their speed getting down on the kickoff, kickoff team is excellent for Freeport. Well, Prendergast looks like he's going to be in there working at quarterback. So there's Sal Tuttle. We haven't seen him in since he went down, driving for the goal line. Appeared to be okay. The word was he's okay, but Prendergast is in there running a little wildcat offense right now. He gets out to the 25-yard line, a pickup of five. It's second down and five. Yeah, my guess is that they just decided at this time of the game they're going to put Prendergrass back there to run the Wildcat, but their offense has been running over the last two drives, last two series, very, very well, so I'm surprised they're, they're making this change, but it looks like it was just a planned change. So Prendergast will take a shotgun again. Six and a half minutes remain in this first half of play. On second and five, Prendergast will throw. Gets drilled. I mean, he got drilled. And there is a flag. But the flag wasn't because of the hit on Prendergast. No, the flag was interference. I believe that's what you're going to hear right now. And it looked to me. This is Bob Miller, Miller, the referee. Well, we'll hear what the call is. Pass interference, defense, number eight. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Michael Groover, the senior, gets flagged. And, and that's a big penalty because Farmingdale was in bad field position to start because of the, the kickoff return. And now this is going to help their field position. And the field position has been the key to this game for both teams. Take a look right now as you see Prendergast, I believe, coming out to the side. Here comes the hit coming up right there by uh, Ferraris. And there's... Over the top, and he basically came back over the top, Michael Groover. Official right there on the spot says, hey, we're calling 15 on that. First and 10, Farmingdale from its own 40. Kevin Wall with room. Kevin Wall for a shot. Kevin Wall still on his feet. Kevin Wall threw down at the 18-yard line. They'll spot it actually at the 16-yard line. Now, it's like Kevin Wall running right out of the, uh, that's the, the wild yards. Yard. That's 44 yards on the run. Yards. And that's uh, and, uh, Kevin Wall has been having a day today. Yep, out of the Wildcat. Not Prendergast back there, but Wall out of the Wildcat. He carries it off tackle. Good downfield blocking by Prendergast right there. And if it wasn't for Shante, Shante Forster Felder, he's gone. Again, nice stalk block down there by Prendergast. Shante Forster Felder with the better speed comes from behind to make the catch. Kevin Allen coming over from his linebacker position. Kevin Wall, nice job, averaging 20 yards a pop. 5.45 remaining in this first half. Take that any day of the week. First and 10, Farmingdale from the 16-yard line of Freeport. Buried at the 16-yard line, so it's no gain. Was Wall. Let me tell you a little bit, Carl, about the read right here and the zone option read. Kevin Wall and Pete Mallory does such a great job as the offensive coordinator getting all these guys, but it's just hard because you see Tuttle coming back in now. Tuttle has the read down, definitely, but when you go to the Wildcat and Wall's trying to read, he's reading that defensive end. It's a tough thing to do, okay? Watch Wall right here. Demiri, he's doing a read for, and, and what Freeport did is they came with a blitz. They have nine men in the box there, and it's just, you're not going any place with that. So it's second down and 10. Big Chris Richards, 67 right there, will try to protect Sal Tuttle back in the game working shotgun. 
And now we've got a whistle. Had Nagy was in motion, and I believe Farmingdale has called for time on second and 10 from the 16-yard line. And that came from the sideline. Buddy's over on the sideline, and basically they're saying, hey, give me a timeout. They, they know what they want to do, and that wasn't the, the situation. Second and 10, they want to come up with something else. Take your timeout. Be sure. Again, we got to get back on the board. We're down by six points. If we can score here, we can, we can make this a definite game. Well, it's time to have your voice heard, and now here's your chance. Every Wednesday night at 8 p.m., Mike Quick will take your calls and answer your emails live in his new show, Quick 60. If you have an opinion on anything high school related, tune in to MSG Varsity Wednesday night at 8 p.m., a Quick 60 with Mike Quick. Mike Quick is in the house tonight. I saw him. He's around. He's about. I was on his show last week. We had a good time. There's Mike Quick. There's Lou Brockno. On the, right in the middle of the screen, there's uh, Jimmy Cavallo. They work the games on MSG Network. There's Jared Greenberg, the host of Sports Desk. And there's Mr. Quick. Look at the clipboard. Quick is taking notes. He's taking notes, but Jared's doing the directing right now. Jared's Believe me, saying. nobody's <laughs> telling Mike Quick. Nobody's directing Mike Quick. Look, really? Look at Quick. Look at the serious face on Quick. And then when we question him on whether or not he was watching the game, he goes, Carl, I saw the game. I saw the game. You want to talk about football? You want to talk about the College of Don Bosco? You know, quick, we'll go off into Jersey. We'll talk about Bergen Catholic. Look at the numbers now. Early on, it wasn't like that. It certainly wasn't. Farmingdale coming back and doing what they do best, running the football, getting off the line of scrimmage, using their big offense to block. Tuttle wants the throw. He's being chased and flushed, gets the pass off. Nice effort along the far side there, trying to grasp it and gather it in by Brian Thompson. An excellent job there by Sal Tuttle. Pressure on him, put the ball where no one could get up at Thompson or out of bounds. There's the pressure, you see. Kevin Allen coming in and putting the pressure on. Nice job, nice effort there by the tight end, Brian Thompson. And, you know, you're talking to Buddy, talking to Pete Mallory about, uh, you know, about Brian Thompson. He's a true dealer. He's the blocker. He's the guy with good hands, but they make a living off their tight ends. They're not always in there, but when they are in there, they run the ball well. You see Brian right there on the sideline. Dale is with trips to the bottom of the screen on third and ten. Tuttle goes to the left side, and he overshoots the intended receiver, Brian Prendergast. A great coverage there by Ashante Foster Felder, number four. Fourth and ten, Tom, from the 16. So we're going to get a look at a little three-pointer here? I think we are. I think Buddy's putting the field goal team in, and uh, his range is probably about 35 to 40 yards. So if we have the ball on the 16, it's going to be spotted on the 23. It's going to be a 33-yard field goal. It's definitely doable. And the holder will be Prendergast, number nine. So this for 33 yards and to cut into that Freeport lead. And that kick is up. And I'll tell you right now, for a high school field goal kicker, that's a beauty from 33 yards out. It's a 20 to 17 game. Snuck it inside that uh, left upright and put it right there with plenty of room to spare. Good job. That's his fourth field goal on the year for Keith Hagnagy. And the kicking game again, showing you on both sides, both mm -hmm. teams doing an excellent job. And look one more time as Keith puts the ball through the left upright. Remember, spot on the left hash, so he has to put it through. <laughs> Actually, it didn't look like it was going through initially and just got just squeezed I'll tell you, in there. It looked a lot better uh, from the live action. I didn't think it was that close, but a great job by the guys in the truck showing you how close it was to perhaps hitting that left upright. Yep, I was going to say that probably was within a football of hitting <laughs> the upright. You know what? Doesn't matter. Yep, it it's made a it field through. goal. It's and in the box score tomorrow, nobody's going to know if they weren't at the game. And, and this puts Farmingdale right back in the situation where if they get another field goal, it's a 20-20 game. That extra point may not loom as large for the Red Devils, mm -hmm. but a touchdown puts Farmingdale up by three. 33-yard field goal by Hadnagy. That drive went 47 yards. A little bit more than two minutes off the clock. 438 left in this first half. Shootout, 20-17, to Freeport over Farmingdale. And Hadnagy will kick off. Now, we've seen him boot a couple tonight for touchbacks can he do it again which is great because you're keeping the ball out of Ashante Foster Felder number four's hands and Kevin Allen's hands number 20. Well we've seen two touchdowns one by Allen a good one and the other one by Foster Felder a good one they both got the speed keep it out of their hands. That's why it's good if you can get another touchback if you're Farmingdale. Here's had Nagy's foot and once again deep into the end zone Tom. A absolutely you know something you can't 
pay enough for a guy who can do that for you. <laughs> on this level. It's certainly, you know. <laughs> on any just, level. It makes it so easy. Every time you know they're taking it on the 20, you know you got good field position as a defensive team starting out there. So that's, uh, that, that's something that's very, very important. Boy, he's been a weapon tonight. Three touchbacks. He's got the field goal. He's got the touchdown reception. He's doing it all. 4.38 left. Exciting first half. Now, that last possession, Freeport scored. This possession, Farmingdale has to play tough defense. They want to make sure they don't score before the half. Freeport trying to get out of their own. Well, here's Kevin Allen getting out of his own way. Oh, the great cut back to the near side. And Allen has dropped at the 49. That's a gain of 29 yards for Kevin Allen. First and 10 Freeport. And that can happen anytime that guy has the ball in his hands. Just watch how he makes things happen. Nothing there to start with, and he takes the ball. He's just going into where the blocking is. He sees it, he plants his foot, cuts back, and just fights off the block of Terrell Brown. Terrell, the 6'2", 255-pound junior, number number uh, 73, makes that block, and you watch as he comes to the outside, ball to the inside. I want to go out. Right now, I want to make my cut. I'm going to change my hands. Ball to the outside, nice straight arm. Back to the live action. Allen. Allen dropped at the 35-yard line, so a gain of 16. So on the last two plays, Kevin Allen has rushed for 45 yards. And I'll tell you something. That you want to feed this guy the ball because when he gets going, he gets going. Dropping back, doesn't see anything. And, and what pressure that puts on the Farmingdale defense. He threw a touchdown pass before call, so if he drops back, you have to honor that. But then if he runs, everything is open in front of him. Look at that here. He opens the field up and just picks up yardage. This is a man that has scored 10 touchdowns in the last two playoff games. Six a couple of weeks ago, four last week, and he's almost up to the century mark in this one. Allen off the cut from that left side inside the 30. Dropped at the 28-yard line, a gain of seven, second down and three, clock moving, 322 left in this first half. And as you said, Carl, now he's over the century mark yeah. in this one, and uh, and this is this spell is doomed for Farmingdale. As you said, the clock is rolling. they got to stop him on this drive. As Kevin takes the ball, puts it in his hand, and looks for the hole, makes that plant with his left foot, cuts up, and picks up a few yards. Timeout, Dale is. Timeout by Farmingdale. Coach Buddy Krumenacher to perhaps slow down this offensive series right now of Freeport. Yeah, he, he has to let the guys know how important this is. If they give up a field goal in this drive, we can live with that. If we give up a touchdown in this drive and we go in now, and, and, and my guess is Freeport may go for two, we could go in down 28-17 by 11 points. That could be really devastating. Do you have to make a stand? And I think just like Russ Sellen was telling his troops before, Buddy has to tell his troops what they need to do to make that stop. You know what I love about Buddy Krumenaka? That he's a graduate, 1965, from Farmingdale High School. You see what they've done, seven-time Nassau County uh, Conference One champions. And Buddy Krumenaka's high school coach, Don Snyder, up here in the press box, still very much involved with Nassau County football. But can you imagine you had Coach Snyder for... What was Coach there for? I 40, 40 something years. Yeah, he was, was there from 50. 40, yeah. He was there from 53 to, to 92. 19, right. That was his last season. Right. So that's close to 40, 39, 40. And now Buddy's been here for 17 years. Two coaches over that time period, and what a great job! The history of Farmingdale football. Well, you know the Dales have been in eight county championships in the last 11 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, they just you know they're here year after year after year. They're a program, and later on we'll get to talk about that. But they are a program. Allen. Scrambling, picking him up, putting him down, jumps to the outside, and he gets to the 17-yard line, 11 more on the carry by Allen. You know, as a coach, I'm sitting up here in my own mind trying to defend this guy, and it's almost <laughs> impossible. I have to run an 8, 4, 9, 7 or something, put 18, 8, 19 guys on the field. Look at him go as he runs that ball down the field. He's got 115 yards right now. And you know what I like about watching Kevin Allen, Tom? He's deliberate enough to slow it down, to watch his blockers, to see the holes. That's what great backs do, Carl. They have the vision to set things up where they know, okay, guy's coming in. I see that red shirt coming from here. I'm going to slow it down. And then if he blocks out, I'm cutting back. If he blocks forward, I'm cutting, you know, in, however it is. Taking it straight up the middle once again was Allen. 
Another four yards for Kevin Allen with 2.45 remaining in this first half. And in the back of the Farmingdale defensive back's minds, Ashante Foster Feld is still sitting out yeah. there. They can't take a chance of coming in and do, doing something and trying to make a hit because all Allen has to do is just drop that ball. They're down near the goal line. It'll be a simple pass for a touchdown. Second down and six for Freeport from the Farmingdale 13-yard line. High snap gathered in Allen. Allen turns the corner. Touchdown, Kevin Allen, 13-yard run. Hey, Kevin Allen just taking the balls. You see the Freeport crowd there, very excited. And just getting to the outside, as you send him in to go, Carl, he's waiting for his box. He's going out, he's looking, he's looking. Okay, there it is. I see the corner, I see the corner. I make my cut up, and he just runs right over. I believe that's Carl Brescia back there to get into the end zone for the score. Andres Lopez for the point after. His last one was blocked by Pat Stark. Well, little two-point, little perfect conversion there that was intercepted. So it was stolen away there by Pat Dunn. And Carl, we've talked about this before, but I that's the point you want to put in there, an opportunity to give him two more points in return because they would have been. And now this is a, a big guy, but there's only one guy in his way from the point, and that was Kevin Allen who might have stopped See, him. that's why I want that blocked. I agree. Extra point or a pickoff. Why can't you return this for two points? Yep. Give the kid the opportunity to do so. You're right. He's not a speed demon, but the opportunity is there. Let him try for it, just like the blocked extra point by Stark on the last conversion. I'm not a big proponent of changing rules in high school football, but I that's one. That no, one. no, no, I understand. That's yes. the one I am a proponent on. They've taken everything else out, put something in that will give the offense, the defense, a chance to be a little offense. You should be able to reward them. High snap there, Kevin Allen taking the ball around the left end and just going, and a nice stalk block out there on the corner. Lowers his shoulder into the end zone for the score. And, and, and good try to get the two points, you know, try to get the ball back up. They're trying to get the two there. Farmingdale now, though, they might have left a little bit too much time there, Carl. Farmingdale has the ball with 216 left to go. They might be able to put something on there. You can see right there, seven plays, 80 yards, 222. They come back, they can strike very, very quickly. Number 20 is a player. He is a player. He <laughs> is a player. player. He said, Anthony Brunetti, I heard you, you're you a pretty good guy. I want to show you what I got. <laughs> well, some people feel that, uh, you know, maybe Kevin Allen does win it. I've seen them both, and I still think for what Anthony Brunetti has done. But then again, he's done a lot here, and so is Tom DiNapoli of Lindbrook. But I have to tell you, the, the thing I like best about Brunetti and Allen is they play both ways. These yes. guys are on both sides well, of the that's, ball. That's they, it. they return punts, they return kicks. You can see 132 yards already. We haven't even hit halftime, ladies no. and gentlemen. This guy is making things happen. And, and then that was the Dale's biggest fear. They didn't want to let him get rolling. He only had 60 yards the first time they played. They bottled him up and didn't let him get rolling. When he gets rolling, he's dangerous. So Freeport by nine. Prendergast from the seven, head of steam, slowed down, still on his feet, bounced back, and then dropped at the 23-yard line. First and 10 for Farmingdale. I believe number six, C.G. Hinton, got in there and knocked Prendergast down. But Dan Olivier was, the, the, first first guy guy he was the first guy down there who slowed him down. He didn't make the tackle, but he slowed him down where Prendergast then had to take his feet and start shuffling him and trying to find a hole. Got the head of steam stopped, so Olivier's great speed helped out there. There is Daniel Olivier. I'll always remember him because of Sir Lawrence. <laughs> it's Sir Daniel right there. Sir Daniel Olivier. Nice job on special teams. Farmingdale with the ball down by nine. Tuttle pitches to Kevin Wall. And Kevin Wall is bowled over there by number seven, Jeff Williams. He got some help from Cephas Knighton Ward, number 60. And Freeport, you know, it's funny. I'm just thinking in my mind. Farmingdale may want to keep this on the ground, not to let Freeport get the ball back. Russ Sones way ahead of me on that. He says, hey, we're getting this ball back because we can <laughs> score before half. He used the timeout right there. Just a quick pitch you see to the outside. Wall taking the ball and meeting a wall of red jerseys on the outside. All right, they're going to run the ball out. So let's just stop them. Maybe we get them to punt. Maybe we can get them to punt. All right, we have no timeouts left, all right? Let's go, just stop. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Stay home. Stay Secondary. Home. You never know. Trick plays. Just make your reads. Nothing behind you. Hey. 
pump routes. Pump. They're not going to throw hitches here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Basically, he's telling us guys, don't get beat deep. They're not going to throw a hitch pattern. They're going to pump you, fake, try to fake you, and then throw deep over your head. Don't get beat deep. That's the first thing Russ telling us guys. He's saying they're also running out the clock, and Russ has no more timeouts left. So he's saying, let's see what we can do. Let's try to stop the clock anywhere we can. If you can drive guys out of bounds, whatever, to make them pump, because they may outkick the coverage, and we can have a punt return for a touchdown. Second down and 14 for Farmingdale from its own 19-yard line. Wall, halfback option, fake the throw, now still wants the throw, and he throws it long, he's got a man out there! And what a super catch by Pat Stork at the 35-yard line! I love it, Carl. Don't get beat deep. And he really didn't get beat, he was on him, but he let him catch the ball deep. That's the one thing that Russ said at the end. Make sure that they're gonna throw long, make sure you don't give them the long pass. 46 yards. 40. 46. 40 yards, 46, 46, 46 yards. Look at this, and again, defensive Great back job. right on the play, doing everything he can. Ashante Forster Felder, he's one of the best athletes back there, but excellent job by Wall delivering the ball. Farmingdale had trips to the top, Tuttle airs it out again. That one was picked off, that was underthrown, and that was picked off, and Freeport steals it right back. Michael Groover, number eight, with the INT. And you gotta know that a guy's sitting right in center field, so when you're throwing that post pattern, you got to read him first, and he never looked at him. He's watching his receiver the whole way in and threw it directly to him. Watch this. Tuttle drops back. He's watching his receiver the whole way and throwing right to him, and he actually, as you said, he throws it right down the field. Michael Groove is sitting there waiting for it. Trying to, lead his, trying to lead his receiver, I don't think there's any question about that, but he just put the ball right into Groover's hands. Keith had Nagy nowhere near the ball. Groover was grooving for the INT. <laughs> I mean, it was a Sunday stroll. It was right there. Tuttle a little bit underthrown there. 125 now left in this first half after Farmingdale got the ball all the way to the Freeport 35 yard line. The INT. Here's Olivier. Or was that Allen? That was Allen. That's Allen. That's Allen. <laughs> Two problems with what just happened, Carl. Problem number one is Farmingdale now goes in on a down note instead of a positive note. Yes, you definitely should be putting the ball up because you want to try to get a touchdown, but that interception hurt him. Problem number two is Allen has the ball with a minute left to go. He could break it at any point. You certainly don't want to go in down 33 to 17. Well, right now, 26-17 in favor of Freeport. 50 seconds remain in this first half of play. Freeport showing twins to the top. Allen shotgun. And Allen is drilled at the 15-yard line. That's a loss of four. Yeah, it's just a bad read by, by Kevin on that one. He should have taken to the outside. He decided to cut back up to the inside, and, uh, and, and it just wasn't there. You can watch right here. As his blocker right there, Dan Olivier, knocks him back to the inside, and Kevin reads inside. Gets hit. Good job by Richards following up, too, as the, uh, the second tackler on that. Got a timeout called as Freeport comes to the near side. Nope, they're going to let the clock run. That's it. They're going to let the clock run out here, and the first half has come to an end in the Nassau County Conference 1 championship game. Freeport got off to a 14-0 lead. Farmingdale tied it at 14. Now it's Farmingdale that's trailing by 9 at 26-17. You know, Freeport scoring on four of their five possessions in that half. That's a, that, that's, a, that's a statement in itself right there. All right, Taylor Walker standing alongside Buddy Krumanak, our head coach of Farmingdale. Thank you so much, Carl. Coach, this first half, what ingredients have to come together for next half to stop Kevin Allen? Well, we need, we need better field coverage. We need to cover the field better, and, and, uh, and we call it trapping the ball. You know, we've, there's, there's been some bad seams in the defense, and obviously and he's a great back. And uh, when there's seams in the defense, he's going to exploit that. So we've got we've to do a better job covering the field. Unfortunately, an intercept interception just thrown with a minute and 25 to go. How are you going um, to make the next 24 minutes play as smart as you can? Well, we're just going to keep doing the things that we're doing. And, uh, you know, he made a bad decision on a pass play. That's fine. You know, we've thrown interceptions before, and, uh, and we'll be out to play the second half. All right, Coach, good luck second half. Guys, back to you.
All right, that's head coach Buddy Krumenacher. Farmingdale down by the score of 26-17. Kevin Allen uh, finding the house. Your school, your stories, your place to find it all. MSGVarsity.com. With game highlights, scores, events, and featured content from TV at MSGVarsity.com, you are the ultimate insider. Ever wonder why so many businesses rely on Optimum? They're always there for me. I could always rely on Optimum to support my business. Call 1-866-580-1314. With Optimum Life Path Service, our school is preparing students for the 21st century. Switch today. You'll save up to 50% or more over the phone company. Call 1-866-580-1314 or visit OptimumBusiness.com. Share tradition. Celebrate loyalty. Honor brotherhood. Start living Ranger life to the fullest. Introducing Blue Shirts United, the official fan community of the New York Rangers. Place to share tradition. Register and show your true colors. Access your team. Experience unforgettable events. And bond with fellow Blue Shirts. Take the pledge. Take the pledge at BlueShirtsUnited.com. Halftime at Seward Stadium, campus of Hofstra University in Hempstead. Halftime at the Nassau County Conference One Championship game and the Freeport Red Devils leading by the score of 26-17. Call Reuter along with Tom Howard. And Tom, we saw a lot of halftime highlights. We, we, we certainly did. That's for sure, Carl. First one we're going to see, Olivia taking the ball, running off tackle 22 yards into the end zone, puts Freeport up 7-0. Freeport responded with a second score, and then Farmingdale comes back. You can see Sal Tuttle putting the ball in Keith had Nagy's hands. As he goes over the middle, left wide open into the end zone. Farmingdale comes back 14 to 7. And then we have Mr. Wall taking the ball into the end zone. Kevin gets in off tackle. Extra point ties the game up 14 14. And then the ball goes back into Kevin Allen's hands around the end. 12 yards into the end zone, just inside. Freeport now leads 26-17. And the halftime numbers bear out a pretty even game numbers-wise, except on the scoreboard. Yeah, it, uh, basically it's the same here. You know, you can see Freeport up with the rushing yardage right now, but before they were up also and Farmingdale came back, they're going to go back and forth. Most of that, that's Mr. Allen carrying the ball, and it's very tough to defend him. And as Buddy said, they want to try to get him trapped. They want to trap the ball and get him inside, but the scoreboard actually reflects something completely different. That's a nine-point lead for the Red Devils. The winner of this game will move on to the Long Island Class 1 title game at Stony Brook on Thanksgiving Saturday. The third quarter about to unfold. We'll be back with the start of it right after this timeout on MSG Varsity High School Sports Showcase. 20 years I've been talking to you. Now it's your turn to talk back. We're going to cover football, soccer, field, hockey. You name it, we're going to cover it. Calling, mailing, texting. I got to hear from you. Mike Quick takes your calls live. A quick 60 on MSG Varsity. Wednesdays at 8, only on Optimum. Hi, I'm from Fios. And I'm here to make sure he tells the truth. I'm his mother. You can get Fios for a special low price. You then add up to $20 in taxes and fees on top of it. Fios is lightning fast internet. Lightning fast is just a phrase you use when you can't say you're the fastest. Optimum Online has the fastest. Order Fios today and get this cool beach umbrella. We're gonna go get a corn dog. Beach umbrella? For the best services at the best value, the truth is it's Optimum or it's not. Uh, music is it, music is my life. Everything I do revolves around music. My conversations with my girlfriend are all o only about music. You know, it's everything is, is music. Twenty six seventeen Freeport over Farmingdale. Just about ready for the start of the third quarter in the Nassau County Conference One Championship game. The winner moves on to the Long Island Class 1 title game. Now, these two teams, Tom Howard, very, very familiar, not only with each other, Russ Sellen, Buddy Krumenacher, 
They've locked horns a bunch of times. You see the years that they've met in either the semis or the finals of this Nassau County Conference One game. And Freeport has had a handle on it, 5-2 with a series lead in the playoffs. Yeah, they, uh, b both teams know their way around the playoffs, that's for sure. They know what's happening, they know what, they, you know what they're doing. Uh, you know, Freeport, unfortunately, hasn't won a Long Island championship uh, since they beat Comac back in the, the early 2000s. They lost uh, a couple years ago, but uh, they lost last year, actually, to Connect Mart, not just a couple years ago. And, and Farmingdale's been in there, but they've lost a couple and, since they beat Floyd back in, uh, you know, 2004, 2003. So uh, both teams definitely want to win this game tonight because they feel this is their year when they get to the Long Island championship that they can win it. Here is number 20, 227 total yards. Three touchdowns, <laughs> two rushing, one passing. That's only half time. Exactly. <laughs> he makes things happen. He has 154 yards rushing, 73 yards passing. I mean, two touchdowns rushing, one touchdown passing the ball to Shante Foster Felder. And as you said, it's only half time. He's on for an all purpose, 500 yard, all purpose night. Farmingdale needs to kick off. Kevin Allen will be back there waiting for the ball. He's going to add to his yard total. So there are the Freeport Red Devils, Long Island Class 1 champs in 2000, a 20 to 19 win in overtime over Comac, and then 2003, 40 to 7 over Floyd. They're hoping to get back there one more time. And if they do advance, that game will be played on the Saturday of Thanksgiving Day weekend at Stony Brook. You saw Jimmy uh, Jones right in that huddle there yeah, on the kickoff yeah, return team. The man team. with the million-dollar smile. He, he is. He's a great guy. But oh, he's, tremendous. He, he's telling his guys all the things they need to do. And Hag Nagy keeps on saying, doesn't matter what you do. I'm putting the ball out of the end zone. So you're not going to be able to return it. <laughs> Jimmy, great coaching instructions, but I don't know if they'll work because if you can't get the ball because the, you know, can't bring it out of the end zone in high school football, Hag Nagy knows that. He puts it in the end zone every time. I'll tell you, Jimmy Jones out of Freeport High School and Vaughn Sanders out of Lawrence, they were what a, combo. a tremendous combo when they played here for Joe Gardy at Hofstra. Absolutely. What oh, a combo. Oh, could they score points? Well, Ashante Foster Felder, we've got a whistle. Oh, he was he in. Yeah, what he did is yeah. he teased him. He put the ball a half <laughs> right. yard into the end zone, so the guy stepped back thinking he got finally got one, and his foot was there. The referee's right on top of it. The touchback. Official. Fourth touchback of the game for number 20, Keith had Nagy, which has really become a weapon because, like you said, Freeport can score points, but if they're going to do it, let them go 80 yards instead of like 40 yards. Yeah, exactly, because generally the way they play football, they're going to get a 30, 35 yard return, maybe yes. even a 40 yard return out of that. So we begin the third quarter of play, and it's a nine point lead for Freeport, and the Red Devils will kick it off here on offense. Shotgun formation is Allen at QB. Takes the direct snap. Allen taking it right up the middle, still busting helmets, driving close to the 30-yard line, just a little bit shy of a first down. Runs over Mike Palmer. Mike yeah. Palmer is a 5'11", 185-pound junior who's a good linebacker, and Kevin Allen just ran him over. Up to 163 yards so far on the evening rushing, and watch right now. Just a fake, and then takes the ball, and you saw right there Mike Palmer, number 44, trying to make the tackle. 31, Pat Dunn comes in. He gets bowled down, too. No, second, and they'll call it a yard for a Freeport first down from its own 29. High snap, gathered in. Allen dropped for a loss of a yard. It'll be third and two. And that can throw off the timing. You see how high he had to get up. You know, luckily he got it. Imagine if the ball went over his head. That could have been a Farmingdale ball because I don't know if he get back there. When I mean, you're jumping up like that, you can't turn around as fast. Farmingdale is rushing in there. Watch the snap come high. Good hands, good reaction gets down, but just doesn't get his timing down now. Good job of blocking up front there on the line by Matt Wernon, number 52. Freeport is one for five in third down conversions in this game. They're facing a third and a little bit more than a yard right now. And they're not going to get it, so Freeport will be forced to punt. Allen does a good job of stretching out, trying to get that. He missed it literally by six inches, but does a real good job of stretching out right now. Takes a snap, good penetration there by the defense. See Mr. Rich is coming from the backside. Ball had to get there. This will be the second punt of the game coming up right now as Allen stretches for that first down and really just missed it by six inches. Call. If he could have got his arm out a little further, hit that line. 
As big number 67, Chris Richards. 6'3", 235, had four tackles and two assists last week. The fumble recovery. Now, this, is, this, this upsets me. I'll be very honest with you. They're measuring this. The ball had they to hit know. the white line right. in order. It had so to hit the white line. It was, you, if you spotted it wrong on the 20 initially, you're going to be giving them the first down. Now it's you know maybe right, you know maybe I'm I'm acting like a coach right now maybe Russ Selling just asked to see how many inches he may want to know. I would hope Russ, knowing Russ, is not going to have a fake punt in this situation. Punt the ball away. <laughs> don't even take a chance. Even if you got the first down. And Jimmy Jones saying, "Come on off, come on off." Kevin Allen's going to punt. What we think? If he punted quick enough, he could have caught a Farmingdale guy running off the field, and that might have been a smart move. Oh boy, this is not a good punt. Straight up in the air. Oh, but it got a decent bounce and rolls another nine yards. So this will be a 20-yard punt and no return. But Farmingdale starts on the Freeport side of the 50. And, and the ball actually hit on the 39-yard line, Carl, and bounced forward that 10 yards. If it would have bounced backwards, it could have been a zero net punt. Yeah. Take a look. Allen punting the ball, and he punts it straight up in the air. And you have you see the, the roll. It's a 17-yard punt total right now, but it hit on the 39, and there's a nice roll. And that's when it died on the yeah, 49, 48, 48 and a well, half. 20-yard punt. The ball was at the 29. They've got it on the 19-yard punt. Yep. I'll have the difference with you. <laughs> Excellent field position right now. Sal Tuttle is your quarterback. And the give and getting wrapped up by Kevin Allen was Carmine Demiri. Now they mix the guys up. Remember, Demiri's in the backfield. Wall is in the backfield. Demiri's a senior. Wall is a junior. They like to mix their players around right now. I'm surprised that Wall didn't start this half. He had such a great first half. You know, these two teams got here by uh, some impressive games. Freeport in the playoffs beat Oceanside 63 to 24. Shut out Baldwin 34 to nothing. In the playoffs for Farmingdale, a 38-18 win over Calhoun, and then a 29-8 win over Syosset. And that's the Syosset team we saw beat yeah, in our beat first them, game. Yeah, that 23-20. Exactly, 23-20, and, and Farmingdale came back and did a good job in that Syosset 2 game. Tuttle, the ball carrier, stopped at the 45-yard line. So this will be a third down upcoming. Now, if you remember the beginning of the game, Freeport had the field position from the beginning. Farmingdale has the field position right now. They definitely want to try to convert this big third and seven situation. If they don't, though, they're going to punt and probably put Freeport in a deep hole. Tuttle looking on for the play from the sideline. The lone setback is 32, Kevin Wall. Farmingdale splits twins to both sides of the field. Tuttle straight drop, near side aerial. Connecting with Had Nagy, he is shy of the first down, though. Yeah, Had Nagy's tried to stretch to make it, but he's going to be a good yard to a yard and a half shy. And this brings up a huge situation for Buddy Krumenacker right now, because if you don't make it, you're giving Freeport good field position. As you see, drops back, ball comes out, but Had Nagy, nowhere near the first down. Fourth and one, delivers the ball on the money. Had Nagy just a little short right there. He tried to stretch it out, yeah, had Nagy. Yeah, but uh, stretched it out out of bounds, and Farmingdale looks like they're going they're for go. it. And they're going out of the Wildcat with their man in the backfield. That's Kevin Wall. Snap to Wall. Room on the left side. Oh, and he's got a tremendous amount of room. And he gets dropped at the 19-yard line, a pickup of 20. Very similar to the touchdown run before, Carl. It's just down blocking off the left side. Now, who's that big guy on the left side? That's Chris Ri Cliff Chris Richards. Chris Richards, easy for me to say. <laughs> and Chris Napolitano, as he sees, they come down. They bring the tight end, Brian Thompson, number 80 in there, and they just crush that whole left side. Good job right there by Kevin Wall running the ball, and good job by middle linebacker Kevin Allen stopping Kevin Wall. You know, when you look at Wall, I think he's deceptively fast. Very similar to our Limbrook Tom DiNapoli Tom, yes. guy. But when you see him up close and personal, it's like, how does this guy do this? But when he gets on the field, he makes things happen. Well, nothing happening right there on the carry by Prendergast, who's brought down at the 20-yard line. Now, remember, Prendergast had the big game out of the Wildcat last week. Wall is having the big game out of the Wildcat this week. But Farmingdale keeps going back to Prendergast because he's their Wildcat guy. He just isn't having the game today that Wall is. 
That's a loss of a yard. It'll be second down and 11 for Farmingdale. The ball resting at the Freeport 19 with 7.20 remaining in this third quarter of play in Freeport holding on to a nine point lead. And we just got a good look at Corey Bateman. All county defensive end right there, number 53, and he can make things happen when he comes off the corner. Tunnel, far side, reception made, but a loss of maybe another half yard. Yeah, I, I, I have it spotted up about a half yard further. He got knocked back, but anyway, it, it wouldn't have made any difference. That's just uh, just a quick out, and it's not picking up anything, not going down the field, and very op possibility of throwing an interception on that play. You, you got to be really careful when you throw those. It is now third down and 11. Tuttle was picked off late in the first half. Tuttle's going to pick him up and put him down. And Tuttle gets to the 16-yard line, a pickup of four. It'll be fourth down and seven. And this could be field goal time. Remember the last time they were on the 16, they came with a field goal. They were on yes. the left half mark, hash mark. They were on the right hash mark now to see what they're going to decide to do. And the T is in there. I see the kick yeah. T. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, Prendergast will hold. This will be from 34 yards away. Had Nagy hit in the first half from 33 yards out. Oh boy, he just drills that and it's a six point game in favor of Freeport, 26 to 20. But Farmingdale with the kicking game inching ever so close. And, and A, nice having that in your back pocket that you can do that when you get down there. B, remember that extra point that Freeport missed before because that in the end could come back to be the difference in the game if Nagy has an opportunity to kick the extra point to win it for him. Well, Pat Stark had the blocked extra point and then Pat Dunn had the two point in the yeah. interception on the two point conversion. We would have liked that two point interception well, if he could have run it back. Then the game right now would be a 26 22 <laughs> game. Oh. Well, it could have been 26 24 if somebody picked up Stark's block and <laughs> raced it, right? That's it. There's had Nagy with a nice job off his foot, also has a touchdown reception. Four, four touchbacks, looking for number five. Exactly, having a great night kicking the ball, having a great night receiving the ball, and unfortunately in high school football, if he doesn't walk off a winner, he's had a terrible night. You know, that's yeah. the thing, when you come to a Nassau County Championship, you come for one reason only, and it isn't about yourself, it's about your team winning and moving on. You know, Tom, had Nagy with that 34-yard field goal, he's got a real good foot. He's also kicking in ideal conditions tonight here at Hofstra. And actually, I noticed there is a very slight wind because the whole night, those those guys up on the top of the uh, the uprights weren't moving. They're moving ever so slightly yeah, right now. Yeah, big three miles an hour. Yeah, I, I wouldn't even say three, probably about a mile and a half. There actually might be a guy down in the end zone blowing at him and making him move. That could be it. Let's see, he's looking for his fifth touchback. This one nearly cleared the back of the end zone. <laughs> well, he was mad after the last one. Hey, look, look what hit. All our MSG people are down there. Let's go! <laughs> There's our senior coordinating producer, Jackie Lyons. There's Jared Greenberg on the left, Jackie Lyons. Jimmy Cavallo's waving to everybody. There's Mike Quick again, Lou Brock. Look at Jimmy Cavallo's tried to up. steal the ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jimmy Cavallo. Jimmy wanted to bring one home with him. Look at Mike, still with the... The Good boy, ready yeah, to go. yeah, yeah, he's a coach. He, want, he always wanted to be a coach. Notice we've always seen him. He hasn't written, written a thing down. He's, <laughs> he's got no ink in his good. pen. He has he no ink there. in his pen. <laughs> Five touchbacks for Had Nagy so far. Olivier. Olivier. Nice job of. Walking the tightrope along the far side. Let's see where they spot it. At the 38-yard line, a pickup of 18 yards for Daniel Olivier. Olivier does a real nice job of running the ball. You can see when he takes a hand off from Allen, he just looks to the inside, doesn't see anything. We're following Allen going the other way. Allen could have made a touchdown. <laughs> Didn't have the ball, though. Olivier takes the ball and does a good job of just reading his blocks. Excellent job on the outside of blocking right there. That was number eight, Michael Groover. And Number Groover. seven coming in your picture right there is Jeff Williams. They're doing a good job of stalk blocking on the corners, the Freeport Red Devil receivers are. Groover had that block. Groover has an INT in this game. Olivier, oh, dragged down from behind. 
That's a real good effort there by big number 52, Chris Napolitano, the six foot, 215 pound senior. Very, very intelligent player on the field too. He's a heady guy. He's like having another coach out in the field, Buddy Truman actor tells me. You look right there, Olivier takes the ball. Chris Napolitano just steps up, reads his read correctly. Two-year starter, fullback also at middle linebacker right now and does a good job one-on-one -on -one of bringing him down. One of the captains on this team, along with Hayden Kirk, Chris Richards, and, of course, Keith Hadnagy, Pat Dunn, Tony Berner. They've got them all. Everybody's a lot of leaders. Well, they are. A lot of leaders, lot, lot of leaders over That's there. good. Allen wants to throw over the middle. And the completion to Ashante Foster Felder to the 42-yard line. You know something, Carl? One of the things I think our viewers don't realize is that this is only Allen's second game at quarterback. Yep. He makes things so difficult because he can run the ball and he can put the ball on the money when he has to. Take a look right here as he sets up. He sees Foster Felder coming into his picture. He delivers it. And there's just a real good job there by Hadnagy of locking and hanging on to that ankle. That could have gone for further. 20 yards on the pass play from the 42 of Farmingdale. And getting out of trouble, still on his feet, and picking up two yards when it looked like it would have been an eight-yard loss was Olivier. You know, as a, as a defensive-minded coach, Carl, this is something that really frustrates you. And I'm not taking anything away from Olivier right there because he did a great job. But when you hit and you lock a guy and you don't bring him down, it can come back to haunt you. And you're going to watch right now, and you're going to take a listen to this also <laughs> of the hitting that's going on and how hard he's running. I'm perfectly fine up here. <laughs> you tell me there are some, some cracking going on down there. They are hitting, and he is taking the hits and picking up the yards. He was thrown for an eight-yard loss, and what does he do? He ends up uh, picking two up two. Yards. Yeah. I mean, Second that's a 10-yard swing. And the clock moving with 335 left in the third quarter and a six-point game. Allen stepping forward. Allen's going to run it. Allen far side. Allen dancing his way inside the 30. They'll spot it at the 27, a pickup of 13. And, and you know, that's the, that's the thing that Kevin Allen can do. Great defensive coverage out here. Watch on the end, and you watch Foster Felder throw the block, but my job is to contain. You see it right there as he came flying into the picture, the Pat Dunn, I believe it was. My job was to contain, and boom, he just cuts it back up inside, and there's no help there behind you. 170 yards so far in the night rushing for Allen. Russ Sellen. 1975 graduate, Lindenhurst High School. Good wrestler, too. Nobody's mentioned that. They talk about his football ability. Who's that? Russ Sellen, great heavyweight wrestler for Was he really? Michael. Absolutely. Wow, you know something I didn't know. I coached against him. I was coaching, uh, at, West, that's coaching at West Babylon at the time. That's why. As Chris Richard trying to inspire this defense of Farmingdale, who Really does need a stop here with the uh, 3.05 left in the third down by six. Yeah, they, they, they need to do something right now. And uh, second and long right now, good play right there. Good job by the defense just slowing him down. But it's slow down, slow down, and bam, there's a big fast play. Allen with time in the seam, found his receiver. Connection made with Valen Vales, the senior wideout number five. When we talk about Ashante Foster Felder, remember Vales is out there, Jeff Williams is out there, Jeray Brown is out there, Michael Groover is out there. They got guys who can catch the football when Allen puts it up. 14-yard hookup. Good job of setting up in the pocket, seeing his receiver, delivering it. And again, he's just following his receiver, so if you're back, sitting back in the zone and you get your linebackers dropping correctly, you may be able to pick that off at some point. First and 10 Freeport from the Farmingdale 13-yard line in a tight ball game. Time winding down third quarter. Allen, far side. Allen off the cutback. Touchdown, Kevin Allen, 13-yard run.
I'll tell you something. That kid can run. Watch how he just knocks people around. Remember, this Farmingdale defense is a tough physical defense. He's taking the ball. He follows his blocks. He cuts to the outside. Great job of stalk blocking down there by Vaughn Vales, but he just runs people over, Carl. 32-20, 12-point lead for Freeport. Now the decision, kick or two? And it looks like two. Yeah, and, and the, you know, I don't know that I wouldn't be using a timeout with the lead right now just to give Allen a breather. You can see how tired he is. He has to make a call. He's the quarterback. And Wait. he's got to go right back on defense following this. There's a timeout. Now there's a timeout. Yeah. You know, I, have no I don't problem. think it's because of the breather because Russ Sellen is upset. That timeout was called because somebody didn't understand the play coming in. Well, let's see if they have 11 players out there. I only count 10 players. Oh, there comes 11. Number five's coming in from the corner. Okay. He just, touchdown, just sort of bumps into the man he's supposed to be riding into the line of scrimmage, follows him around the end, cuts back to the inside, runs over two guys into the end zone for the score. So 2-12 left in this third quarter. And Freeport has extended the lead to 32-20. And now discussing the two-point conversion. Yeah, the, the fact of the matter is right now you're up by 12 points. If you're up by 13, it really isn't going to matter because if Farmingdale does score two touchdowns with their kicker, they're probably going to get 14 anyway. So you go for the 14. If you don't make it, it's not going to matter unless they get the two touchdowns. And if they do get the two touchdowns, the odds are they were going to make both their extra points. So it's a, you know, a good move here on Russell and Clark. Yeah, Buddy's talking yeah, about getting buddy. in there. He's firing up his defense you know what? to get in. He's, I'm fired up. Like when I, re, I remember when I first met Buddy Krumenacher and stuff like that, when he was the coach at Hempstead. Back in the 80s, Rutgers Cup champs, 1984, 85, 86, and 1988. And the history of that Hempstead Tigers program before Buddy Krumenaka came over to Farmingdale, the place he graduated, was an assistant under Coach Snyder, and then got the job when Coach Snyder retired. But that reminded me when Buddy was like almost like intimating that he's pushing the sleds yeah. with the guys. Oh, yeah. I That's... can remember his practices over at Hempstead High School. <laughs> and he was with Doc Darty. Oh, boy, and Rick Point. <laughs> and Rick Point. And two-point conversion right there, taken to the house by Kevin Allen, 34-20. You want to get the ball in the end zone, you give it to your best back, you go through your best hole. Kevin Allen just took the ball, and he just went over David Agu, Matt Werner, into the end zone. Watch number 20. Just sort of a fake, no, no fake pitching. Just flows. That was a great job of freezing Mike Palmer. Because Dan Olivier is going out, Mike Palmer gets frozen right here, and he just cuts to the inside, walks into the end zone for the score. Good call. That was a great call right there because he had the option on. Palmer had to come. He had to read the option. He had contain on that, so he froze, and all Allen had to do was cut it up and take it in. Two twelve left, third quarter, 14-point lead for Freeport at 34 to 20. And now Farmingdale is going to have to put together a nice little drive here and just like that, but nice let's, drive. Let's remember how Farmingdale moved the ball best tonight. They moved it in Kevin Wall's hands running the ball, not by putting it up passing. So don't get nervous now that you're down by 14. You have a whole quarter left. Don't think we got to get Sal Tuttle to start throwing the ball down the field on every play. Take your time. Use Wall. Use the guys who got you here, okay? You have some people, and I'm not saying don't throw the ball, but I'm saying, you know, don't start panicking either at this point. And Farmingdale has been around long enough to know that they're not going to start panicking. Andres Lopez, number 35, will kick off for the Freeport Red Devils. And they are red tonight. Bright red uniforms, white numbers, and Farmingdale in the white uniforms with those big green numbers. Lopez angles to the near side. Prendergast from the 10-yard line. And nowhere to go. Swarmed under at the 14-yard line. Yeah, I think they had a wedge going up the middle. He tried to get back there, but good job of directional kicking by the Freeport kickers. They've done a great job all night by directional kicking that way. 
Take a look at this kick as it comes. They're going to take Prendergrass. They're going to trap him back. They got good speed coming down there. By the time he recovers, he's down on the nine-yard line, and now they are just coming around. Nothing but a sea of red, nowhere to go. Great field position right now by the Red Devils. And look at Chris Key, number 14, one of the first couple of guys in there to make that. He's a junior, is Key, number 14. Off the spin on his, still on the feet to the 24-yard line. And boy, oh boy, I didn't see who got him at the ankles, but if he doesn't get him, Wall might have been history. Yeah, exactly, and that's exactly, and Farmingdale is doing exactly what you need to do. Keep the ball, give it to the guy who's got you here, and he's doing a great job tonight. And watch right there, 51 gets a little finger. I think it was Kevin Allen also. Oh, yeah, actually, Kevin Allen started tackling him, and then Henry Ferraris gets in and gets a finger. Watch and you Allen. see Allen, right? Fought off the block. Yep. Got a hand on his jersey. Between the two of them, they get him down, and you're right. He might have been gone at that point. Pickup of eight, second down and two. Good job of driving off and getting your yardage. I think Farmingdale at this point right now just wants to get to the fourth quarter. First quarter was all Freeport. Second quarter was all Farmingdale. Yeah. Third quarter was all Freeport. <laughs> Farmingdale wants to get to the fourth quarter, Carl. They'd like to put one on the board maybe before the fourth quarter, but there's only a minute and 20 left in this third quarter. Signals coming in from head coach Russ Sellen, 24th year on the sidelines for Freeport. I tell you, he must have tied arms because he gives all the <laughs> offensive signals, he gives all the defensive signals. It's like, you know. I like that. He, you know, third baseman. There you go. He's a coach. Shotgun for Tuttle on first and 10. There's a pitch. There's Wall. And he's just dragged down. He is dragged down. That play never developed. 51, Henry Ferreras getting in there and stopping it immediately. Yeah, Ferreras does just a real good job. It's his first year at the linebacker position, but he knows what he's doing. And when you go to linebacker university, which is which is, <laughs> which is I'll tell you that, you know how to play the, play the game. You take a look. He just He's completely uncovered, and Wall has nowhere to go but backwards. And linebacker university has the coveted Piner Award, which is given to the best linebacker in Nassau County. They've had, boy, oh boy, their share of winners, named after Bill Piner, the former Section 8 football coordinator, great athletic director as well over at Cold Spring Harbor High School. Now retired, Prendergast on that reception, brought down at the 32-yard line. That will be the last play of this third quarter. So they will mark the ball, switch ends. And three quarters complete of the Nassau County Conference One Championship game. And the Red Devils up by 14, only 12 minutes away from the crown champions. Where's the best place to get Long Island news? News 12 Long Island. I've got Long Island stories no one else has. Only on 12. When I see this, I know those other guys didn't even show up. And first on 12? Man, who doesn't like to be first? Of course News 12 got there first. They live here. News 12 has the news that's important to me. Makes me feel a little special. No other news channel does that. I'm in. News 12 Long Island. Only on Cablevision, not on phone company TV or anywhere else. Your school, your stories, your place to find it all. MSGVarsity.com. With game highlights, scores, events, clubs, and featured content from TV, MSGVarsity.com is the place for everything going on in your high school community. Explore it all. Learn about what's going on in your school at MSGVarsity.com. You are the ultimate insider. Online and on IOTV channel 14 and 614. Start of the fourth quarter, and the defending Nassau County Conference One champs, 12 minutes away, Tom, if they could fend off Farmingdale, it'll be a return trip to that Long Island Class One title game for Freeport and Russ Ellen. And, and as we said before, they're looking to get back there to avenge the loss to Connect last year. Uh, they have a winner of the William Floyd Sachem North. and Sachem North, who is having a tremendous year this year. William Floyd, uh, we saw Paul Longo up here in the booth before, and. Uh, 
you know, he, he has put together some run himself over the last four years. I like how he told me on the phone this week that uh, we're the underdog, call. <laughs> I said, I, I'm sure you are, Paul, because uh, you have one loss and it was to them. Yeah, you're the underdog. <laughs> and that was a different he's team, too, to back deflect. in the beginning. He's so. trying to deflect a 17-14 loss. Yeah, in the last say, couple of seconds. In, in week one. Yeah. But they're the underdog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Hey, Dave Falco's club would be ready for that one. I'll tell you, that would be a super game. Tunnel, back to throw on third and five. That one, I don't know if he's short on that, if he got hit or what, but that pass never made it. Yeah, really, uh, it, it looked exactly like you said. It almost looked like he got hit. I didn't see anybody there, but no. uh, it was uh, well short. And this is a fourth and five. Yeah, you got to punt the football here. Yeah, it's you beginning have to. of fourth quarter. It's not even, not even a question. You know, remember, you can score two touchdowns. Things happen. We saw Limbrook score over Hewlett two touchdowns in the last three minutes last week. You take a look, he sets up. Yeah, he no, he just short armed it. That yeah. was, you know, that just went into the dirt. Intended receiver was number 31, Pat Dunn. Had Nagy will kick. Brown, number 18, in single safety for Freeport. Had Nagy with a high pick. And takes a bounce right there at the 42-yard line. It's a 26-yard kick. Excellent field position again for Freeport to start from its own 42-yard line. Yeah, they, uh, they've they had field position this game, and one of the things I've noticed that, uh, that I think is really making the difference of the game is the athleticism of Freeport. They have the speed, and the speed has made a big difference in this game. If you remember a couple of times, Farmingdale has broken away, been caught from behind. When Freeport breaks away, no one's catching them from behind. You know, I'm watching Russ Sell, and I'm looking towards the north end zone excuse me, the south end zone here at Stewart Stadium, and that coffee clutch is still going on amongst our MSG varsity people and MSG people. So they're having a good time down there in the corner of the end zone on this first and 10 right now for the Red Devils. And Olivier, look at Farmingdale going for the strip right now, Tom. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta make a tackle first. The second or third guy gotta go for the strip, and it looks like they're all sort of grabbing in that area. But uh, Olivier, Olivier has impressed me. Very, very, very hard much runner. So. Very, very hard runner. Much better than, you know, uh, you're talking to Russ Sellen during the week. He's a great blocker. He's, you know, uh, you know, tough, tough guy, blah, blah, blah. He's going on and on. Well, you Did know he say blah, blah, blah? He said blah, 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 and yada, yada, yada. And you know something? <laughs> he just can run the football as well. And he's going to be the guy next year. I don't think there's any question he'll step into Kevin Allen's shoes. A nice size, six foot, 215 pounder. He really said blah, blah, blah? <laughs> <laughs> now I do think I made that up. <laughs> Second down and seven. Here's Allen looking to go right up the middle. It wasn't happening. Perhaps a couple of yards to the 48 yard line. The third and four. Take a look, Allen just takes the ball. He's following, you know, just the blocking into the middle. Olivier trying to throw a block there on the side, and Allen just trying to get what was given to him there. Not much, but the offensive line again getting off the ball. Third and four, you can see that. Four for five passing for 165, 106 yards and 24 rushes for 190 yards. And you see the TDs right there. He has to, you know, Sachem North and, and uh, William Florida here watching this, they have to be able to defend the whole football field against this guy. Big third down and four. Allen trying the left side. Allen is bottled up and denied as he looked to turn the far corner. And Freeport, in all probability, they're sending out that punt team. Yes, yeah, they, they yeah, are. Yeah, they're not going to mess around just like Farmingdale didn't mess around last time. You're not, you know, you're not across the 50-yard line. You're just across the 50-yard line. You're going to make sure that you punt the ball and put Farmingdale on the hole and make them go. We talked about playing the long field in the beginning of the game. Both coaches now know in the fourth quarter you've got to make the team play the long field. I'm telling you, deep for the Taylor. Letting it roll, picking it up at the 20. And a very short return of three yards there by number 31, Pat Dunn. Gets up a little bit slow, and now it's first and 10, Farmingdale. Down 14, only nine and a half remaining. Yeah, cl the clock is not going to be a factor, I don't believe, until you get on to five minutes. When you get to that five-minute mark, it really becomes a factor. But right now, it's the field position, and Farmingdale keeps starting a bad field position. You know, see, that's why I would disagree with you, because why at nine and a half minutes, you're down by 14, they're not getting field position. I think clock is a factor right now. 
Oh, you, I mean, you still have the ability to break it. You still have the right. ability to set some things up. You have to get the ball and make sure you score sometime right under five minutes. Then you still have time to play defense and still get it back again with enough time to score your second time. I'm not saying I'm not panicking until five minutes. No, I'm no, saying, I, no, I, I, okay. I need to score a touchdown by the five-minute mark. That's not a good start on this drive on that first and ten. Yeah. Well, the other thing you do is when you're in the spread offense, you can call your play right there on the line. They need to start calling the plays quicker so that they're not using as much time. Well, they're pretty much lining up right yeah. after they spotted the no, ball, no, so that play it. did come in And he's hustling. Time. You can see Sal hustling. He's saying, okay, here's the play. Let's get set and let's go. Got Kevin Wall right back there with him. He's their runner. Trips to the top of the screen for Farmingdale. Comes near side. Stark on a nice crossing pattern. A little bit shy of that first down to the 31. This will be a big third down and two for Farmingdale. Take a look here. You can see Tuttle set up, Stark come down, make a real nice grab. But as you said, Carl, just a little bit short. And this is where I go back to my Kevin Wall out of that. And there it is. There is Wall, yep. and Wall is fighting and gone forward for that first down to the 35-yard line. They've had a lot of success with him in big situations, fourth down, third down situations there. Watching the clock, less than eight and a half minutes remaining for Buddy Krumanaka's Farmingdale Dalers. Down by 14 in the Nassau County Conference One Championship game. Wall. Whoa! Driven right back on a smack of a hit by Daniel Olivier. And Olivier says, hello, Mr. Wall. Just wanted to greet you. Welcome to my world. You got it. This is welcome my world. He just comes right in there, sees it, and, and <laughs> you know, that was one I think that Wall really didn't have his eyes open on because you can see there was no hole there whatsoever, but he just tried to run it. Olivier adjusting his helmet after that one. Second down and 10. Tuttle. And is that reception made by Hadnagy? Yes, it is. Yes, yes it, it is. is at the 49. A pickup of 14. What an unbelievably super catch there by Hadnagy. I'll tell you something. He took that ball off the carpet. It was right down on the ground. Sal Tuttle steps up. He delivers the ball. And had Nagy comes into your picture and just takes the ball away from the defensive back. You can see right there, Michael That's Groover. Groover. Yeah, Michael Groover trying to make the interception. Had Nagy comes to the ball. Screen set up. Whoa! Bounced out of bounds at the 40-yard line. That should be enough for another Farmingdale first down. Dale is starting to go on the move now. They're getting things going. Hurry up the offense. Keep yourselves going. Keep in the moment. Clock stop when he went out of bounds with 7.14. Nice screen pass here. Sal Tuttle drops back. You can see the pressure coming in there. Wall takes the ball, follows his blockers. Live action. Tuttle had Nagy. Had Nagy drove over the 35 to the 34-yard line. And, boy, they want perhaps... Face mask. A face mask? Yeah, he's had Nagy saying they grabbed my whole face mask and swung it around, and we could see that clearly up here, Carl. Because but unfortunately, well, doesn't get the call. I don't know if it was Buddy Krumenacher, the coach, that was uh, ranting and raving. Oh yes! See, right there. I mean, oh my no God! They got him by That's the corner. Flagrant. They got him by the corner, and they yanked it. And unfortunately, you know, and this is not a knock on the officials. No. It was just a miss. You're watching so many things screen. going on, and it was just a miss on that. And you know, nothing you're going to do about it. But it, but it was right there from the jail bench. And Tuttle is driven back as he tried to go over the left side of his line. Lost a yard. Tuttle on his way out. Wildcat on the way in. Six minutes and 15 seconds to go in this fourth quarter. Down by 14 at 34-20. Third down and four for Farmingdale from the Freeport 34-yard line. This an unbelievably big play coming up here. Wall. 
He's short by a couple. It'll be fourth and two, and you know they're going for it, Tom. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't go off the corner. They've had the success with Wall off the left corner. Doesn't mean that they can't go off the right corner, but it looks like when he can make his cut and either get to the outside or cut it back up to the inside. He just went straight ahead that time, and you can see there it just isn't where you think it's going to be. He's trying to get the, the offensive line push. He's hoping it happened, but it didn't. Freeport beat him to the ball that time. Well, here it comes. This could be the season right now with 525, and it's ticking. Yeah, remember I said before, you want to get that touchdown right around the five-minute mark. Maybe just under it, but around there. But I'll if tell you, you, if you give the ball back now, you're never going to get that four touchdown. Four minutes went real fast when yep. we started talking about it with nine and a half left. Fourth and two, wall, tough snap. But denied. That might be the season right there. Denied big time by number 65, David Agu. And... and, and the high snap is what hurt him because he doesn't have his vision when he's looking up for the ball there. Can't see where he needs to run. All right, there is a timeout on the field. We'll come back with the final 505 right after this timeout. Right in your area, thousands of businesses are choosing Optimum. Optimum Life Path gives us the bandwidth we need to transition to the digital world. Call 1-866-580-1316. For a very traditional company, Optimum Business has been a part of our evolution. Switch today. You'll save up to 50% or more over the phone company. Call 1-866-580-1316 or visit OptimumBusiness.com. Paul Reuter along with Tom Howard and Taylor Walker, part of the big throng here at Shewitt Stadium, campus of Hofstra University for the Nassau County Conference One Championship game. And right now it looks like it's going to be Freeport, Tom, leading at 34-20 with 5.05 left. That big fourth and two stop a moment ago before our break by the Freeport D. It did a great job. And again, the high snap is the thing I think that really hurt. As you see, Kevin Wall going up is over his right shoulder. He's going to his left. Freeport putting pressure on from the beginning. And you can see right there, it's like, you're not coming our way. It's good job right there. Excellent. Henry Ferrara says, we stopped them. And now, they have the ball. They're probably going to keep it on the ground. They have a good ability to run. You know, you have a guy like Kevin Allen in your backfield. You're in great shape. So it's first and 10. And Allen driving <laughs> and taking everybody with him and forging forward for seven yards, second down and three, and in about four minutes and 50 seconds, repeat champions right here. We'll yeah. see repeat champs for Freeport. Now yeah, we see Kevin Allen just following his blocker up the middle, and I'd be very surprised, as good as, uh, as, good as Dan o Olivier has been, to see anybody else than Kevin Allen touch the ball for the remaining four minutes and uh, 33 seconds. You saw Allen just carry pressure with him, number 39. Here is Allen. And Allen's busting. There is a flag down. Allen dropped at the 30, but there's a flag at the 43. And this one's coming back. And Russ Allen on the yeah. looking at Bob Miller, the referee, going, what? Yeah, I see. Bob's uh, looking back at Russ. Russ is saying, no, it's holding. He's telling him, no, it's holding. I made the call. I know what I'm talking about. So uh, Allen, with 197 yards before that play, was going well over 200 is coming back now. Well, it's coming all the way back. Oh, wait a minute now. Well, what's, here's the call. <laughs> wait. Face mask against the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. First down. So wow. why was Russ Sellin so upset with <laughs> Bob Miller? Well, remember, Bob Miller picked up the flag and walked away. So maybe he did pick up the flag right there. So he was walking away. But right now, face mask at the end, end of, of the, the run. play. Of the Taylors, first down. What face mask? Wait a second. Now I got a major problem. Whoa, I'm telling that's you that's not I got a face mask. You don't call the face mask before, and you call a face mask now. Now, where was the face mask? Nah, I got a problem. That's with that a bad. One. I'm sorry. No, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that because it could have been. No, no, no. The face mask may not have been on the runner, though, Carl. He said at the end of the play. Yeah, but it might have been on a blocker. We don't know. Maybe okay. we'll be able to pick it up, but it could be on someone else. Uh, give As it we're both that, sitting up there saying this, because we didn't see anybody tackle the runner with a face mask, it could have been a blocker doing that. So let's give the, uh, the officials. All right, give him the benefit of the exactly, doubt. Bob Miller and his staff, then. Let's see. As Allen takes it on first and ten. Four minutes and five seconds left. 
see the frustration now coming from the Dallas because they know they got to get there in that you know that desperation mode where you got to get the ball back. We have to do something because they're going to keep the ball on the ground. Well we'll watch the Farmingdale players because you know they're going for the scripts right now anytime Freeport's going to carry the ball you're going to see hands and arms swatting in there to try to knock it loose and Freeport in no hurry right now with 340 they're going to take every bit of time they can off that clock. Remember high school football you have 25 seconds from when the ball is spotted and you have to know how to use every second of those 25. Oh dropped for a loss is Allen to the 30 yard line a loss of three it's third and 15. And there's Tony Burner who just got in and made the hit. And again, you can see, you know, uh, Buddy talking to his troops. Timeout. Farmingdale timeout. With 3.23 left, down by 14 in the Nassau County Conference 1 championship game. Freeport defending champions need to hold off about three and a half more minutes, and they return to the Long Island Class 1 title game. You know, it's third and long right now, and Buddy's probably telling the guys, listen, if, it's, if, it, if they run the ball right now, we need to use our next timeout. If they put the ball in the air and it's incomplete, don't worry about the timeout. But I doubt that Russ is going to put the ball in the air at this point because Allen has the ability to pick up 14 or 15 yards just running. Yeah. And if not him, Olivier can. Yeah, they, they, they're both shown they could do that. Coaching to the very end. Both guys doing exactly what they do best in life. Coaching their players, letting them know what needs to be done. Coaching their players and developing real good young men. Absolutely, and they both do that. They both yeah. do that. A passion for the game. High school sports. And you have two of the best coaches in the history of Nassau County football. And Buddy Krumanaka, first with Hempstead, now with Farmingdale. And of course, Russ Sellin, 24 years now on the Freeport side. Yeah, you're talk talking about Buddy at Hempstead before. Remember, he ran, he he won the Rutgers Cup back in 84, right 85, 86. 86 80, so I'm saying, and 88. It, right, but it was three years in a row, and then another year, and exactly like Paul Longo out in Suffolk has just done yeah. where he had his run for a couple years in a 05, row. 05, 06, 07. Exactly, had three in a row, which is a very, very difficult thing to do. On third and 14, a little jump pass, a little Tim Tebow right there over the middle. It was incomplete, so it stops the clock, and actually it helps Farmingdale with 3.19 left. You see Russ still going and, and, and going going strong because he <laughs> wants to make sure right now that you know his guys use up every second possible. Take a look right here. Whoop. Just a little jump pass. It's the old pop pass they used to use, and unfortunately Olivier was unable to come down with it because it was a little bit too high. Good call. I mean, just a good call on that play. I like the uh, the vertical there by Allen. I don't know if he plays basketball, but if not, I think Bobby DeBonis, the Freeport basketball coach, should recruit Allen and play basketball. There's Allen. Well, he knows a heck of a football player. He takes it down to the 16-yard line. That's a pickup of 13 on that fourth down play. He's going to be a yard short. But, you know, run that kid and run him and run him Let's and keep run running. him. Exactly. Take a look as he takes the ball. Follows his blockers, sees the opening, and that's what he does so good. He sees an opening, he's able to cut and pick up the extra yardage even after he's hit. Look at the size, look at blocking. Great job of blocking. Freeport guys getting into the Dallas, making things happen. But he's a yard shy, so on downs, Farmingdale will take over. First and 10 from its own 21 yard line, down by 14 and only 3.11 left on the clock. Mentioned that 2000 game, a win over Comac, 20 to 19 in overtime, the 2003 championship game in Long Island class one, 40 to seven over William Floyd, the Colonials. And I just love, again, watching the coaches and the way that they coach. They know, you know, mm -hmm. most coaches say 3 11 left, four by two touchdowns. Come on, guys, just do this. Oh, no, no, no. Like it's a they, one point exactly, game. Because they know that things can happen very, very quickly. And that's why the two of them are so successful and won Rutgers Cups and been to the Long Island title games and have won Nassau County championships. They know, how, they know what's going on there. Yeah, exactly. Well, the cheerleaders will have another week of uh, workouts, right? <laughs> They'll be going out to uh, Stony Brook where the Long Island Class 1 game will be played if 
You one guys can hang on. One and three, and uh, Lou and Andre, four. the coach of Lawrence, who's going out to Stony Brook, feels very good about his team. Had Nagy first down. It stops the clock as well with a gain out of about 12 yards. You got, you got to be careful about throwing those long flat passes with athletes like Freeport have back there because they pick it off out there. It's a pick six quick. Uh, yeah, it could be a home run. The ball at the 28-yard line on first and 10, and Sal Tuttle will work shotgun. He's got to rally the troops and fast. And he's going to run it here. He's going to reverse his field. And he's driven down at the 35-yard line, a pickup of seven. It's second down and three, but the clock is moving with 2.50. Sometimes as a quarterback, you, you want to make sure after you scram when you get out, and don't go past the line of scrimmage, stop. You have some time and find that receiver because they're moving on and you may be able to get a big strike. Usually when you're scrambling around like that, even though you pick up seven or eight yards, you waste the time and you haven't gotten the big strike. Tuttle being chased. Tuttle's in trouble. Tuttle gets it off. And a diving effort for the interception on the far side there by Jeff Williams. A heads up right there by Sal Tuttle just getting the ball out of bounds. He knew what was happening. He was out there. He decided to get the ball out of bounds, make sure nobody else could intercept it. He seemed scrambled because he felt the pressure on his back right there. Coming on strong. Got the ball out of bounds. Almost intercepted by Jeff Williams. Two and a half minutes remain. On third and three from the 35 for Farmingdale. And that pass is broken up. It'll be fourth down and three for the Dalers. Perhaps it's last offensive play of this 2009 season. Yeah, Matt Werner dropping back from his linebacker position almost had a pick on that one as Sal put the ball a little short and Matt was in the right place at the right time. Russ Sellen is still Coaching. Coaching is hard. It's like it's like the first quarter with 2:25 left. Yeah, well, we don't see it on the other side, but I'm sure Buddy but, is doing oh, the exact same thing. Absolutely. But when you're losing, you got to do that. When you're winning, <laughs> it's like sometimes you know people have the you know thought to relax, and that's when you don't want to relax. Tuttle throwing deep and intended on the far side for Pat Dunn. It goes out of bounds and on downs. It goes back to Freeport with 2.20 remaining, and it looks like Freeport will defend its Nassau County Conference One Championship trophy. Yeah, Farmingdale has two timeouts left. I don't know that they're going to use both those timeouts. I think Freeport's going to take the ball. They're just going to run the football. I don't know that they're looking to score. If they get one, that's great, but uh, they're going to run it, and we'll see what Buddy does on defense at this point. But. It pretty much is said and done. You can see right there, buddy, mm -hmm. it's, uh, the realization is sort of setting in that, uh, you know, the, the, it was the, the field position from the beginning of the game, you know. The, yeah, they never the, really had it exactly. established. Yeah, they didn't get the established field position, and uh, Freeport got off to a hot start tonight. That's Olivier. And again, special thanks on this timeout. Special thanks to both schools, their respective coaches and administrators for helping us prepare for this game on MSG Varsity High School Sports Showcase. Doing a great job. Always always there, always willing to give a hand. And uh, coaches, as, as tight as this past mm -hmm. week was, they're ready to sit down with us. And By the way, we will have on MSG Varsity High School Sports Showcase, we will televise the Long Island class two, three, and four games. And Madison Square Garden, their game of the week, MSG game of the week with Lou Brogno and Jimmy Cavallo, Maggie Gray on the sidelines. They will have the Long Island class one game. So all four televised on the MSG network in one way or another. And that's why they're here scouting so well tonight. And they're still going off in that, uh, well, it's broken up the group a little bit in that far end zone. Mike Quick is still out there with that clipboard that I haven't seen him write one word on. It actually isn't a clipboard. It actually what is, is it? a recorder that looks like a clipboard, <laughs> and he's been talking into it all night. Oh, Mike Quick, 22 years doing what he does best at the Garden. You know, we think we know a lot when we're dealing with Nassau and Suffolk County. He has everything. Tri-State. Exactly. Tri-State. everything. 
Don't tell him that, though. <laughs> we don't want to, want to, to get any bigger than it is. Nah, he's <laughs> a great guy. Allen, left side. Hagnagy drags him down from behind on that second down and 12 with 2.03. Oh, actually, 2.05. They stopped the clock. And, and, and I can say Farmadio just used their last timeout. So at this point right now, if Freeport does not pick up a first down on the next play, they have two. Remember, they have two more plays mm -hmm. to get the first down. But if they don't pick up a first down, Farmingdale will get the ball back probably, probably with about a minute left to go. If Freeport does pick up the first down, they can just take an E and the game is over. Tom, I'm going to remind you and all the folks to log on to MSGVarsity.com for comprehensive coverage of your high school. MSGVarsity.com's videos, photos, and stories will be professionally produced not only by MSG Varsity, but by the students and teachers in your community. MSGVarsity.com is truly the online destination for local schools by local schools. Every school has its stories. Now there's a place to share them all. MSGVarsity.com. When you go home from here, I want you to log on to MSGVarsity.com. And with my computer, 1903 that it is, it will take me until tomorrow afternoon when I'm leaving the house to go to the Sage and William Floyd game to get onto it. Someday I'll upgrade. I think you should. So 205 remaining in this fourth quarter, 34-20. In favor of Freeport, looking to kill the clock. And they stay on the ground with Kevin Allen. On that third and 14, picked up about four. It'll be fourth and 10. Have, have to snap the ball at 124. The ball will, if they don't get the first down, the clock will stop when, after that next play. So Farmdale may get the ball back with about a minute and 20, minute 19 left. But uh, if they get the first down, and I think the ball will be in Kevin Allen's hands for this mm -hmm. nine yard jaunt that he wants to try to take. We've got a timeout called by Freeport. You know, you had to do it before 124, so they did it at 125 <laughs> on the nose. And uh, neither team has a timeout left, so that's it for the timeouts. Yep. And while we're sitting here talking, Carl, just let up. Oh, we got there's the Nassau boys. As we missed that, they, I missed that before. But Nassau boys, top ten football, and uh, Farmingdale and Freeport, because of their losses during the year, are down below Garden City and Seaford, which are both undefeated. And now you uh, got to remember that's the overall conferences one, two, three, and four. And after I saw Lawrence play today, let me tell you something. They are a very quick, fast Ooh, team. They, uh, move them up. Exactly. They, uh, they, they looked good. So two undefeated. Tom Flatley's Garden City Trojans. Rapa Paul's Seaford Vikings. Both advancing to the Long Island Championship Games. Garden City taking on Terry Manning and the Bulldogs from North Bab. That could be a, a war. A <laughs> war. His ground and pound attack. And they do pound. Nice stop there by Pat Dunn on that fourth down play and nine yards to go on Kevin Allen. So on down, Freeport will turn it over. And Farmingdale offensively try to get something positive here, go off on a winning note, so to speak. You know, they, they need to, number one, they need to score a touchdown. They need to get an onside kick. They need to score a second touchdown. That's a lot. And they need to make both extra points count. And that's just to get them to overtime. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a long haul. Not saying it's not doable, but it's a long haul, especially against an athletic team like Freeport. Well, Freeport's got like a two-man rush and playing nine men in center field. Had Nagy fighting for some extra yardage over the 35 to the 37-yard line. And they'll give him anything underneath oh. they want because you can't drive the length of the field. And had Nagy hurt his wrist, you can see he's holding that hand right now. Yep. You're not going to be catching passes if you have a hurt hand. 55 seconds and counting. And Freeport will defend its Nassau County Conference 1 championship. Oh, a little razzle-dazzle. And it's Kevin Wall. And Wall is taken out of bounds at the 38-yard line. It's the old hook and lateral. Yeah, you pull we've it out. seen that before, huh? Exactly. This year on MSG Varsity. A absolutely. And you pull that one out. I think every coach has it someplace in their playbook. He just throws the ball. Tuttle delivers the ball on the, on the 
money. Now and Pat Stock, yep, takes the ball to deliver this to Wall. We saw this in the Wanto Elmont yep. game. And, but because Freeport is back so far, some of the guys behind are not biting on that. Usually that works best when everybody comes up and bites on it, and you take off. 41 seconds remain, first and 10 for Farmingdale from the Freeport 38. Tuttle going long. Tuttle's got his man. No, incomplete. Yeah, that hurt. That's that a slip. Stark yeah. lost his footing and dropped the ball. And you saw the frustration right there, Pat, when he just threw the ball back to the official because he knew that ball was delivered on the money. Sal Tuttle did a good job of setting up, delivering the ball right where he wanted it. The clock would have stopped because it was a first down. Farmingdale could have got on the ball and had about 15 yards to go for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. No quitting these Dallas, that's for sure. No. Um, you play for Buddy Krumenach, you play for <laughs> Russ Sellen, the word quit, just like Herman Edwards when he was the head coach of the Jets, is not in the vocabulary. <laughs> Kevin Wall to the 30-yard line. No first, clock keeps running. Yep. And there's 22 seconds left in this fourth quarter. 18 seconds until Freeport officially has defended its Nassau County Conference One Championship. Tuttle, wall underneath. Wall can't get out of bounds, and unfortunately for the season, it is now over for Farmingdale. Freeport, your Nassau County Conference One champs for a second straight year. Well, the clock actually stopped to, to even though there's one second just to spot oh, it, but the once, once they move the change, they'll start it, and there's no way Farmingdale's going to get that snap off. As a matter of fact, the players are hugging each other. They're yeah. giving slap and five <laughs> out on the field. So the refs should just start the thing, which he's going to do right now. And that's it. There's one happy group of Red Devils out there right now, Carl. Because they knew, remember, they came in with a loss to the Dallas earlier in the year, and they were shut down in that game. Turned it on a couple weeks later, and now they came back and did a great job tonight. Deserved to be called the Nassau County Champs. Kevin Allen helped pave the way for the Freeport Red Devils. And Freeport wins it by the score of 34 to 20. Coming back with some post-game comments right after this timeout on MSG Varsity. The years of practice, the hopes and dreams. When it's game time, there is no turning back. Every week, High School Sports Showcase brings you full-length high school games on MSG Varsity. Every school has its legends. Every school has its glories. Every school has an almost. A someday. A someday. A someday. A someday. And a Hail Mary. Every school can list the championships it's won. And the games it should have. Every school has its stars. And its understudies. Every school has its hamlets. And its second strings. Every school has its MVPs. Its MVPs. Its MVPs. Its MVPs. Its MVPs. And its underdogs. Every school has the chances it's taken. And the opportunities it's blown. Every school. Every school. Every school. Every school. Every school. Every school has its stories. Now there's a place to share them all. MSG Varsity is the first network devoted to local high school sports and activities. Only on Optimum. Well, it's all over, and Freeport defends its Nassau County Conference One Championship 34-20 over Farmingdale. Call Reuter along with Tom Howard. And, Tom, you know, when you break it down, really the difference in this game was the running ability of Kevin Allen. Absolutely. The, the running ability of Kevin Allen and the blocking of the offensive line. They talked about the guys in the trenches. Well, they did their job. And the guys on the outside, look at the block right there. It's a good job of stock blocking, and Kevin Allen setting up those blocks by getting into the end zone three different times rushing and passing one time tonight. So when you look at the final numbers in this game, you and I were discussing them uh, just a, a moment ago, and.
they're really not a big, big difference, but still, you know, Freeport comes out on top. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about 125 more rushing yards. Farmingdale had to put the ball in the air a little bit more often than they're used to doing, and that's exactly what Russ said, Seven said coming in here. Put them in second along, make them put the ball up. If they do that, we can win the game. Well, he certainly did that by 14 points on his way to a second straight Long Island Championship game. So once again, the final score in this one, Freeport defends its Nassau County Conference One Championship 34-20 over Farmingdale. The executive producer of MSV Varsity High School Sports Showcase is Mike Lardner. The coordinating producer, Brian Butler. Our producer, Russ Relkin, directed by Eric Abram. Director of Operations, Sean Kennedy. Our technical director is Ellen Wells. So, for Taylor Walker, Tom Howard, our entire MSG Varsity High School Sports Showcase crew, I'm Paul Reuter saying so long from Hofstra, Seward Stadium, where the Freeport Red Devils defend their Nassau County Conference, way, Conference One Championship 34 to 20 over the Dalers from Farmingdale. We'll see you next time on MSG Varsity High School Sports Showcase. Good night from Hempstead. should have taken that left toy to Albuquerque. The New Year's Day Looney Tune Normans Marathon. We'll be right back. Dex, I've been spotted. Send backup. Ben! Cartoon Network's biggest game ever, Fusion Ball. The time is now. The hero is you. Play free for a limited time, only on FusionFall.com. Rated everyone, 10 and up. Healthy beauty is the journey. And the first step is healthy, beautiful skin. Start with Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion. The exclusive oat formula combines the best of nature with a proof of science to create healthy skin for life. Clinical studies show it actually improves skin's health in one day with significant improvement in just two weeks. For healthy beauty that lasts a lifetime, discover Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion. And to keep your baby's skin healthy and protected, try pediatrician-recommended Aveeno Baby. You've never seen kids bump like this. Get ready! It's a whole new way to make this summer fun. It's the unbelievable Kids Bop 14. Today's biggest songs sung by kids for kids. Kids Bop 14 features special guest Sean Kingston. Even more of the kid friendly songs you've been waiting for. You can order Kids Bop 14 and receive two copies for the price of one. To order two CDs of Kids Bop 14 for $18.98 plus $5.95 shipping and handling, you can call the number on your screen. Must be 18 or older to order. Now back to the New Year's Day Looney Tune Normas Marathon.
walking over a four-wheel clover that I I did, I did, I did to a pussy cat. 